hell yeah. Hi. Um, to anyone who's watching this, you're watching a game that was arranged through the Goblet, which is a community on the internet that gets together and plays tabletop role-playing games online, uh, mostly concentrating with indie games, story games, you know, PBTA games, uh, OSR stuff. You can find them at gauntlet-rpg.com where they do lots of stuff like blogs, forums, uh, their monthly zine, uh, Codex, which has... You know, uh, the supplements to existing games and original games in itself. There's also the podcast network. Check out the latest episode of the Gauntlet podcast where uh, the community shouted out their favorite game uh, that they played in 2019. Um, I'll just say mine has the initials GS. You just have to listen to the rest to figure that out if you care. If you don't, uh, yes, that's fine. But listen to our podcast anyway. You get lots of, like, great you will have a list of RPGs you want to play and like stuff that like, oh, I wish, maybe I should get to that someday. These people will be trying to sell the shit out of things. They were their favorite games. Uh, also, there's the Hangouts calendar, uh, which is kind of like the beating heart of the gauntlet. That's where all their games are arranged. This game in particular is the session one of a run of Beam Saber, a forged in the dark game of mecha warfare written by Austin Ramsey. Um, I'll put a link down below to his itch where you can find Beam Saber. Um, it's a forged in the dark game, which means it's a hack of Blades in the Dark by John Harper. Uh, when I say mecha, Echo Warfare, I mean exactly what it is. It, this is a game about war, about pilots uh, fighting that war using giant fantastical machines, vehicles of, of any stripes from, you know, your typical bipedal Gundams to, I'm looking at one of these, there's a, there's a tank spider. Uh, we'll get to that later. Jesus Christ. There's, there's a big chunky boy that I, you know they can take like five to ten artillery strikes head on. because They're big and chunky. Um, more on that later. Uh, um, yeah, so, uh, but before we get into all that stuff, let's just meet our players first. Uh, we'll do character stuff later. Uh, oh, yeah, there is an, yeah, there is, yeah, a, I, I, yeah, I should finish it. I should round up all the mechs. Yes, there's a four-armed cowboy mech. I don't know. That looks like a giant revolver. And yes, there's an Ava angelic creepy... Uh, what is up with those legs? Um, so we got all stripes of mechs. It's going uh, gonna to see them in action, hopefully, tonight. It's going to be great. Uh, but let's introduce our players first. We'll get to characters in a minute because I want to talk about touchstones, about campaign expectations and whatnot before that. Who actually has those expectations? Six arm? Oh, oh shit. Yeah, there is six arm. Huh. All right. Hi, my name is Leandro. I use him pronouns. I'm easily distracted. I'm running this thing. I'm GM. Hi. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go from uh, left to right on the character keeper. Just, uh, well, just introduce yourselves, pronouns. And if you want to shout out a cool thing on the internet, feel free to do so. I'll start with yourself, Ferret. Hello, I am Ferret, aka Sawyer. I'll answer to either. Gender wise, I'll answer to anything said with respect. And what I want to shout out is Avery Alder released a new skin called the Disciple. It looks like it will break the game, whatever game you're playing, and I want to try it out one day. Oh, well, yeah, I should check that out. Uh, a reminder to myself. It's on the recording to check that out later. Anything that's shouted out, I'll put a link down below um, for sure. So folks who might watch this can also check that out. Up next, Alex, would you kind of introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, I'm Alex. I use he, him, or they, them pronouns. Uh, I don't have anything to shout out. No worries. Um, it doesn't have to be a thing you're involved with, or it could be just a cool thing you like, but, but that's perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I'm not no involved in things. <laughs> you don't have to be involved. It's just something you think it's cool. I don't think things are cool. Nice. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, up next, Sabine, you can introduce yourself. Uh, me? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Sabine. I use any pronouns. Um, cool thing on the internet. Oh my gosh. Um, I'd probably recommend a very good pillow to sleep on right now but uh, i don't have any websites for that so no i'm sorry i have nothing d 
Didn't you have a th uh, RPG thing that got published in some oh, magazine yeah, that got yeah, mentioned yeah. earlier? Okay, okay. I, I had a uh, trophy incursion called the Giant's Carcass pu that was published in Codex, the Gauntlet's monthly scene, which is amazing, even if I am now one of its writers. But don't let that uh, um, don't let that chase you away, because I can occasionally write, only occasionally. I'm shutting up now because I can go on a long time about myself. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ju uh, just to clarify, especially even further, you can find Sabine's Incursion, the Giant's Carcass. It's, it's so much. Uh, it's the latest issue of Codex. It's Blood 3. Um, and yeah, delightful stuff in there. <laughs> and last but not the least, uh, Pocket, would you kindly introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Pocket. He, him pronouns. I'm currently semi-obsessing over mapping software for RPGs because there's a campaign cartographer humble bundle, and then people are telling me about Wonder Draft and all sorts of other mapping applications. So right now, my brain is pretty much just filled with city maps. Hi. Ooh, I've been looking at that bundle folding as well. It's it's tempting, but do I know? Maps? It's been extended to the thirteenth. Oh, so, has it? Okay, right. I got ten yeah. more days to figure that out. You don't have, yeah. You've got like instead of three more hours, you have like ten days. Okay. So. Oh, thank God! I didn't even know I had three hours. Uh, <laughs> oh man, three hours. Okay, cool. I'll put a link down below for anyone who wants to check that out. All your mapping needs. All right. So before we talk about what we expect of the of this run of Beam Saber. Um, I want to talk about the safety tools that we are using for this run, and uh, been doing a poor job of remembering to talk about them. So this is my reminder to myself to remember to talk about them. Um, uh, do you want to mention? Uh, we did talk about this off broadcast, but I want to reiterate: we have our lines of fails. Lines are things that won't be crossed, just won't show up on the fiction at all. It's just off limits. Fails are things that can happen in fiction, um, but uh, you know they'll they'll get like a set or two or we'll fast forward over to a half screen. We're not going to concentrate the camera on them. Um, I've borrowed uh, this checkbox system from Lowell Francis. So there's some stuff like oh, uh, there might be some content that are like let's ask first before we bring them up. Um, and there's some stuff that's checked that the folks are interested in and. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see what folks are interested in. I'm just checking that now. Hmm. Uh, all right. This should be interesting. Um, we're also using the X card for this series. Basically, if we do roll into a scene where folks were uncomfortable for any reason, and any reason is perfectly fine. Sorry, the TV in my living room just turned on, and I don't know why. That's creepy. I'll turn that. That's really creepy. Um, anyway, yes, but if you do roll into a scene where folks were uncomfortable for any reason, and any reason, fine. That's why my my face is suddenly more bright. The TV just turned on. I, I'm being really distracted by this. This is creepy. Um, I might. Uh, it could be any detail, um, and no one gets, and no one has to proffer a reason why uh, they want to X card a detail, like either a name or even just the general tone of the scene. Um, they can say they want to X that either on the chat or on the video, which makes the symbol here, or on the role for your party. Um, I might ask some questions on what detail is being X card, but no one gets to question if the card is played. If it's played, uh, we'll start over and try something else. And finally, we have an open door policy. Um, if folks feel the need to step away from the table at any time, whether there's an emergency they need to take care of, they're more tired than they thought, uh, if you're not up to it, and that's perfectly fine. There's no judgment here. Or if you need to call break at any time, and any time is fine. You could be, I don't know, uh, what ludicrous thing can happen. I don't know. You might be up against this uber mech that's made out of five mechs that combined each other into a giant super mech that's conducting a lightning storm to, to hit your puny little, oh, you thought you had an Ava mech, but no, you were, you're puny. You're up against a god mech, and you're going to be hit by lightning, and then suddenly uh, your, your your mother has forgotten her keys, and you need to let her in. And uh, and uh, at any moment, people can pause, um, even if it ruins the tension. Actually, we'll try not to ruin the tension. No, we're not playing Voltron. It's not that It's not that Gundam. I'm sorry. We're not playing, we're not playing G Gundam. I'm so sorry. Um, we're 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 in the dregs of the universal century. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's that's enough of that spiel. All right. <clears throat> so before we get into characters and whatnot, um, Beam Saber does recommend like we get a general feel of what 
people are expecting from this game um like what touchstones are folks thinking about like um um I don't, I, don't, I don't mind anything outside of UC. I grew up with Gundam Wing and G Gundam, honestly. Um, I'm getting distracted by the chat. Um, yeah, so like what? So I, I've written the blurb, but yeah, this is a game about being sucked into a huge war. Um, it's being conducted by factions that are like almost ideas rather than people, and you are just like parts of its like machine. And we've decided what your, what at least the type of patron faction y'all are working under. So that's so we've decided that we'll get to that uh, later. Um, but yeah, we're you're gonna get into conflict for sure. Um, but like, I guess we'll do another round. Like, what sort of like touchstones like uh, do they want to bring in? Like, what part pieces of media? Or history, were they thinking about um, and going into this? So I'll start back to you, Ferret. Is there like, I don't know, movies or TV shows or anything that you want to evoke? Um, I will say G Gundam, but not in the uh, absurd Gonzo manner. But like that, the nations are fighting between each other. It's not as friendly as G Gundam, but I want that tension that uh, your neighbor may turn into an enemy the next day. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. I'll note that down. Um, G Gundam National Warfare. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alex, what about you? Um, I mean, I'll, you know, definitely uh, say 8th MS team uh, as a touchstone as far as Gundams go. Uh, and War in the Pocket, of course. Uh, also, uh, any of the friends at the table sci-fi seasons, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're, yeah, you're lucky. I know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> not that it's not a popular show, but like, uh, well, you already know I know that show. So uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, Sabine, what about you? What, what's huh. what are you thinking about? Yeah, well, well, mostly most of my knowledge about this topic is already by osmosis. I've read some uh, Neo Genesis Evangelion, and I saw the last uh, last episode, which was very strange, and which was in Japanese, which I don't understand. But we had somebody translate it at some points, at least, and explain it. Um, I liked it, but it was very strange. Uh, also, I liked the blurb, and I liked the whole emotional and uh, war and stuff like that. So, yeah, big robots. I mean, I've I've, I've seen stuff. I've I've taken the knowledge from the common subconscious, I guess, but I have no it, it clear knowledge. Have to be it doesn't have to be big robot stuff. Like one of the touchstones in the book is a show called Generation Kill, which is an HBO show about uh, soldier American soldiers in Iraq. Uh, so, or people have cited like stuff like Band of Brothers, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's part of like you know, yeah, war band, bringing band people of, together. So it doesn't have band to be big brothers. Robot. I've seen and I have read some uh, uh, mangas and i've seen some animes but it was a while ago and i don't remember a lot of the titles no it's perfectly fine um we'll get to like what you want from the campaign uh, afterwards uh, after this looking through touchstones for sure um yeah my internet is being weird uh what about you pocket uh is there any like specific touchstones that uh you're thinking about. I think most of my touchstones are probably more like things in the campaign. Like, is there some kind of Geneva Convention that people are supposed to adhere to? You know, we're using these giant mechs. That's obviously going to have an effect on civilian populations unless they're evacuated, but it's still going to destroy civilian buildings because they're just too big not to. So, like I said, yeah, actually, I was thinking Metal Gear Solid as well. Um, like the critique of militarism, the critique of power that's implicit in the games. Um, but beyond that, I mean, most of the stuff that I want to look at is like what what, it, what actually is the environment that this war is occurring in? Are there accepted standards of war? What counts as a war crime? That sort of thing. <clears throat> but like I said, I'm not sure that's actually, I'm not sure that's actually yeah. a touchstone for you. No, that's fine. I think we, that that's we're 
that's the next part because I'm actually talking about like what what like wishes or what expectations people have for this month. I think uh, that's a good segue into that. Um, so I'll run back to you, Ferret. Um, yeah, do you have like wishes or like what do you want to see? It could be like high level stuff, like yeah, all that stuff about standards of war and how they're applied and how mechs change that. Or it could even be like simple stuff like what arc arcs do you want to see for characters? Or even even more mundane stuff like do we want to be on space? Do you want to be in a desert? I think uh, since Pocket mentioned how Geneva Convention stuff, we're probably dealing with some civilian, at least a adja civilian adjacent stuff. But yeah, fair. What do you, what are you hoping to see for this month? I'm hoping for like setting wise, like to be city wise or otherwise urban environments, or at least starting off there. And I really wanted to see how we interact. and like how our problems are going to screw ourselves and each other over problems uh sorry my internet dropped there i lost what you said after how we interact just that how the problems will screw ourselves and each other over <laughs> oh yeah no problems screw ourselves and each other okay cool i hope my notes will be legible um, in the next week or so. What about you, Alex? What are your expectations? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I want, uh, yeah, I excited about Frontline. I want a little more mission variety than just like uh, uh, go in and uh, like fight a bunch of mechs. But I assume that's already uh, happening. I'd love uh, to also. Uh, see some sort of sabotage stuff maybe uh urban environments i like and definitely uh what ferret was saying about you know us screwing each other uh, each other over like i'm not picky i want to <clears throat> match some big robots against each other real good uh mostly uh and also you know put these deeply troubled people in big weapons together and watch the sparks fly. <laughs> oh boy, will there be sparks flying? That's what the connection stuff is for. Um, Sabine, what are you expecting? Well, I'm expecting, as I wrote in the chat, fire, blood, and sadness. And that's mostly what I'm here for anyway. So fighting okay. and, and uh, well, feelings. Yeah, fighting and feelings, that's... <laughs> Uh, the lesser known Street Fighter hack of lasers and feelings. Um, okay. Uh, Pocket, I know you mentioned stuff already, but is there anything you want to add to uh, what you were talking about? Well, I thought of another touchstone, actually, just to really go in okay. completely reverse order for you. Starship Troopers. Ooh. I mean, there is a critique of the militarism yeah. and the jingoism and the propaganda. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm. That's that's something that I'm very much interested in exploring because one of the things that I'm looking at is that my character didn't ask to get in this war. I'm not sure that any of us asked to get into it, and yet we're dragged into it. How is it affecting us? Do we believe in what we're doing? Are we just trying to survive another day? You know, are are, are we? Do we have our own code? of how we operate as a squad do are there things that we do not do or t jobs we do not take is there some kind of broader G geneva convention that's supposed to be governing this war do people abide by it are there asynchronous terror squads that get dispatched by these organizations and these governments to basically step outside the the conduct that is permitted under any kind of broader convention you know basically how is the war fought? Why? How does it affect us at a very personal level, on a day-to-day -day level? You know, do, what does our downtime even look like? You know, do you actually have a job? Are you pulling shots in a coffee shop when you're not out piloting a mech? You know, uh, everything from the broader political environment, clear on down to the basic, de like day-to-day -day level of existence and what that looks like. Um, and you know, I'm not I'm not opposed to punching it to throwing mechs at each other. 
but I kind of want to get an idea of what somebody's life actually looks like in this setting. Cool. Um, I know you only did that one shot and gone to comma. There is actually an entire downtime phase for <laughs> Forge in the Dark stuff. So with definitely there's room to see um, how quote unquote ordinary life is affected by the war and how even ordinary your lives are as pilots given the and, and like Sabine said in chat, meant... what do we do when our moral code gets violated? What do we do when somebody mm -hmm. steps aside like if either somebody in our squad steps outside the way we do things or when someone outside the squad steps outside the way that we think sh things should be done? You know, do we get some street justice or you know how does that work? Uh, we've lost Alex, by the way. Yeah, we lost him again. Um, we'll give him another minute or so because like, we're going to go into... Um, what we're thinking is, I'm thinking is we're going to go into characters, we're going to do connections, and then we're going to flesh out this, the squad itself. Um, and then, including your patron faction, um, uh, which is, again, the, the, the autocracy. Although there is an option for an alternative, which is a monarchy. Um, if, if you just want to work for for the divine right of kings rather than a, <laughs> a oh, leader. Oh, monarchy. Monarchy yeah. is cool somehow because we can then have princes and princesses and stuff like that. That's weird. Oh, but... ooh, like there's, like it, it could actually work in like balls and how like the truly wealthy and powered and privileged are getting through this war and not being affected by it while we're basically bleeding and dying in the dirt. We could be working in like the uh, uh, attack on Titans kind of city where we get to go to the third hidden city with our mechs and uh, <laughs> party with the yeah. other rest. And our officers are all noble people. Like uh, this, uh, our, our squad leader is not just a lieutenant; he's also a count or something like that. That's oh, how he I, got the job. I'm like, the officer. Oh, cool! Yes, your grace. <laughs> I had a completely um, idea for how I got the job, but yeah, this would be interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we'll, we'll switch to monarchy then. Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the temporary name I put for the autocracy is even an Attack on Titan reference, Dominion of Ymir. I'm going to change that because I think it's a bit close. Um, um, yeah, okay, Alex just uh, emailed the, the, the just emailed saying, uh, did everyone else just say that it was just him? Did it just turn on again? This is, what is happening? Uh, that pair of things, my sibling's doing something. Turn off the voice activation on it. Hey, oh, that acts. Hey, hello. Oh my God, finally. My rest yeah. of my internet will be fine. Uh, oh, Jitsi. Could not start for some reason. I'm very sorry. Um, no it's a weird question for you. Have you cleared your cache recently? Uh, probably not. <clears throat> One thing that I try to do before every gauntlet or every online session is clear the cache because the mm -hmm. cache can get filled pretty quickly when you're streaming video. Okay. Yeah, I'll go do that. Uh, I, <laughs> I just saw what you changed your name to in the, in the, in the sheet. That's amazing. I was trying to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cute. Oh, yeah, Jitsi's weird. I remember, I ran trophy uh, on this, and Pearl's camera just went sideways. And we don't Love know why that happened. Yeah. Um, all right. So while you were gone, we I mentioned that you're working for an autocracy, but there is actually an autocracy alternative in the book, which is a monarchy, and uh, that's where you're. That's where you're working for now, a monarchy. So. <laughs> Which I guess is this it's a softer form of autocracy. Well it's, it feels cooler. Um <laughs> all right. Let's go to our characters. Um and yeah, I think we'll go from left to right. So what I want to know is yeah, the general pitch of their character, uh their playbook. We'll save mechs for when they show up. <laughs> because mechs can be their whole whole entire thing but like we'll save like the description of what they do when we, when they actually come into play um but yeah like 
I want to know like your whole deal, playbook, whatnot, your history, tragedy, and opening, um, for sure, and maybe even like the special ability you took. So, sorry, Fred. I'm gonna start with you once more. You 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 picked that spot, so I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, introduce us to your character. I only picked it because it was blue. It doesn't matter that it's first, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I am playing Desdemona Des LaRue, whose uh, code name was Queen based off the uh, chess piece. But I don't know if that, I think this might be her, um, now her like goal. <laughs> well, funny you mentioned that because uh, we'll, we'll get to drives later. But yeah, yeah no, keep, uh, yeah, keep talking. <laughs> Uh, she was, uh, her look is young and edgy. I think she, uh, keeps up with like the modern, like the cutting edge of, of like, uh, niche fashions, which you, like my players can see the picture of this, uh, really nice black goth girl with, uh, blue hair. So I think she just, eh, she just keeps to whatever makes her look like she could be the most popular of this like niche environment to uh, maybe support her rise, but I don't believe that uh, she started out as a royal, uh, or however one becomes a uh, uh, a noble in this world. But um, she had a uh, she was a prodigy, a child prodigy, and got took to tactics really well and uh, just warfare, and was put in this. Um, training program that was outside the greater protectorate area to you know be able to be to be close enough to the front lines that could get some hands-on training and basically war interns and uh she shot to the top of her class and she's the reason that several of these people at her training uh, center survived as it was attacked and her tragedy is that she was a one of a handful of survive. I think her unit is the only one to survive, and she was not able to save the parents' barracks. So yeah, everyone that was everyone that was she was like that she wanted to uh, bring up with her in this life she was fighting for aren't with her anymore. <laughs> And the war took both her chance for a normal childhood life of, you know, going to school, having friends, doing what she wanted, and forced her into a monarchy's world and a world on war. And I think her opening is that um, it's like, you know, she graduated, so she is technically a noble, but this is like being a barely land-owning duchess. And she's put on the front lines more because they want they don't want her to gr uh, go up in the ranks, and it's like you know, well, yeah, you saved your unit, but only your unit survived. So here, you're on the front lines. <laughs> oh God! So yeah, I've got a few questions. Uh, Many, I think. We're, we're, I guess we're kind of establishing that like this monarchy isn't like there's not like a line of succession of some sort. It sounds like you're promoted to nobility true quote-unquote merit i think it's like uh like for the like the duchesses the dukes the barons like i think like the the actual monarchy is has been a bloodline but like technically you can like marry into it or uh because or uh like you there is like technically a way to be elevated into that bloodline it's just never happened before <clears throat> but it, it's there should it happen or yeah anyone it, wanted to it's there should anyone like overcome the prejudices and the traditions that it's never happened it's like you know uh technically like someone that is 35 could become president it's never happened but it could Sorry, I just saw Alex put in the chat, and God, do we have our own Reinhard from this? Sorry, we're referencing other anime now. Um, yeah, what's your what's the special ability you took? Uh, tactical genius. I can uh, 
aid my team members twice without spending stress permission. Yeah, it's some, and you can just say whatever you plan. Yep. And I may change my Mac, but uh, because of the Royal connection now, because I had to pick that one more when I was thinking I was going to be a low level officer. Hmm. All right. Ah, well, dude. I said we're going to get to mechs later, but oh, that means we'll get our gun tank spider. Um, I mean, just look for a more glamorous gun tank spider. <laughs> oh, good luck. I'm sure you can find one. Um, yeah, so I mentioned drives, and actually, while we're going to these characters, let's, uh, well, let's have folks think about drives. Um, so drives are people's goals, big picture goals. Like, it could be something uh, like, I want to be a famous pop star, or I want to rebuild this orphanage, or I want to be queen or something. I don't know. But they're like something that's the thing that's driving you forward. Um, it's like the biggest aspiration you could have. And it could range from I want to own a starship, or I want to reunite with my family, or I want to I want to take out my rival. Um and and um, we'll fill out, and as we play, we'll fill up our drive clock, put uh, effort into fulfilling those drives, and then those drive clocks can be spent for cool stuff, which we'll get to uh, later. So, while we're going through these characters, have a think about what drives folks, can, your characters, can have. Um, so, let's go to the next character, um, Alex. Tell us about your character. Yes, uh, so uh, my character is Cubica Krim, uh, call sign Vogue, um, on account of uh, when she was young, she was a uh, fashion uh, maven and fashion designer, um, and she always uh, looked I, I just have her look here, written here as incredible. Um, I think she's a lot older than she looks, actually. I think she's, like, in her 40s, uh, at least. Uh, so, yeah, when she was young, she was a fashionista. Uh, she... Uh, her home city got firebombed, uh, and, like, all her work and everything was destroyed uh, and like was left homeless, ended up in the army uh, and discovered a talent for sneaking around that got her uh, quickly transferred into a black ops unit where she spent mm. a while. And that's the opening uh, that basically as I think as of recently, she's been transferred out to this frontline unit for reasons she does not know. I was going to uh, ask about that, if she knew why she's in this new squad. No, I think that might be her drive to find that out. Uh, but uh, yeah, she's the infiltrator uh, playbook. Uh, so she... Uh, although, although she looks amazing and really you know stands out, in her daily life, uh, she's also very good at going unnoticed. I was going to ask how she managed to do that, uh, from uh, looking incredible to, I guess, I mean, just knowing what yeah. to dress. Yeah, and uh, also like optical camera. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah, of course, you do have that, I guess. Oh yeah, you do. It's a fine yeah. optical camo. Yeah, it's just not doing so... the same. It's both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah. Um, so when you say the, your home state is firebomb, there's like nobody you know left, or at least you, you everyone you know has been like scattered. Yeah, think? like I think a lot of people she knew uh, from back then uh, died. A lot more have probably died since. Uh, and in general, just like yeah, everything was scattered, uh, and you know. Uh, her, I, I mean, essentially, her life went up in flames along with the city. So, uh, you know who committed the firebombing? 
Um, we were told it was, uh, I don't know, one of the other factions. Uh, that that, that yeah, is pick so a type. Um, yeah. We were told it was the democracy. Wow. The uh, Let's see. What, what name did I put for them? The Starbound Federation. Oh, what have they been up to? Um, um, okay. Well, Do you think it's true? Not actually... I'm not sure she really... She... I think she knows, like, it could very well not be true. But also she knows, like... The truth is a malleable thing. I guess. I guess. Like, she's less interested in finding out and just. Yeah. Uh, she's participated in false flag operations herself at this point. Like. <laughs> oh yeah. She's done some running... shady. She's done some shady shit. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. There's a running joke in the beam date. Uh, beam saber discord, and that you, it's not a beam saber campaign unless your squad inadvertently or actually does a false flag uh, operation it just <laughs> keeps happening apparently I, I don't know why uh but it just does um all right so yeah we got a good sense of cubic crin um go to you sabine tell us about your character yeah okay i am going to play uh yaren lars he uses he or any pronouns he is not very doesn't give a lot of fucks about pronouns really you just call him something or anything really and he's fine with that um he his family as far as he remembers they lived in some wildish part pretty pretty low tech and things and life was hard he remembers being hungry a lot and being cold a lot and being afraid of his life but he doesn't know what really but then well some people came by and said hey you look healthy or maybe i don't know you look like you can work anyway you go and work at the mines and then he became an indentured servant which is a polite thing of saying he was not really a free man at a mine and he worked at my, that mine for a while and at that point he always saw those soldiers and those mechs and it was a dream he wanted to go and fight he that was his dream that was everything he ever wanted just to go out there and, and fight instead of working in a mine or something like that and then he did and well war he didn't expect war to be that bloody or that violent or anything really that that deadly he didn't expect to be that scared and that's well yeah but he's there now and he can't get out so he has to kind of kind of get through it right because that that what he was what he wanted um yeah <laughs> i was gonna ask if like does he want to get out or is he still in the this is what i wanted right sort of phase yeah i think he's in the in the he's more like it's it's less like okay i make this work because this is what i wanted and i work hard it's more like i can't just get out i i wanted this but i really don't want it anymore but i i'm caught now i i, I signed a contract and stuff like that and in any way getting out would mean what what where would i go back to the mines no i can't i don't want to do that it's kind of caught uh, so he's in between bargaining and acceptance. Um, yeah, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I could be his drive to find a way to to leave um, and go to a better place, which maybe hopefully isn't death. Yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah, is he good at it? <laughs> Might be a gauche thing to say, but like your playbook is a soldier. Is he good at what he does? Yeah, I think he is actually, but uh, he he has a lot of instincts that uh, lead him in, uh, in the right direction when he's in the fight. He's like, mostly he's pretty natural at that, but he doesn't really know what he's doing. I guess that's that's the point. He doesn't, he's good at it, but he doesn't really, he's just po pointing and clicking stuff and it, it works, but yeah, well, 
Hmm. He's scared that this magic will fade or something like that, I guess. Oh, wow. <laughs> So there's, it's one way to call it magic, I suppose. Um, how does he deal with people? Uh, he's he's a bit swingy and uh, moody, I guess. Moody is a good word. Sometimes he's kind of friendly and uh, kind of even even wants to be liked and accepted. And other times he's just totally standoffish and just, just stares at people because he thinks that's what soldiers do, stare at people and be mean and violent and... and stuff like that but he actually Fair wants enough. he actually wants to connect but he doesn't really know how to do that with, with other people who just go out and kill people and like it maybe even fair enough um oh god i feel bad for him already but it really is um all right i think that's a good sketch of hyaren Last but not the least, uh, Pocket, tell us about your character. All right, I'll be playing Callista Black, codename, or well, call him the sign Shellshock. And uh, she has a, surprisingly enough for this group, not very pleasant backstory. I'm sure you're all surprised and shocked. She was actually abducted, abducted by pirates as a young child. Uh, pirates raided her hometown and killed a bunch of people in it. She's not sure if her parents are alive or dead, uh, but it doesn't matter because she didn't really remember her last name. She was abducted when she was about three or four years old by pirates and was inadvertently rescued by a mercenary crew that was sent to kill those pirates. And they sort of, well, they didn't, they weren't complete assholes. So, you know, they kind of took her in, but as a result, she didn't really have a childhood. She had to learn, she had to work to earn her keep. And she was able to learn a bit about mechs and working on mechs and repairing them and reading tech manuals and figuring things out. And along the way, she learned how to patch some of these crew members up when they came back and their mechs were shot to hell. So she learned how to stitch things up and remove bullets and rather surprisingly became a pretty effective medic of sorts. And as she grew older, she started learning how to pilot mechs from them and started taking her own mechs out. You know, there were a lot of people in that crew who didn't make it and some who did, but a lot who didn't. And the ones, pretty much everybody who is still around from it, she's patched them up at least two or three times. In a couple of cases, saved their lives. But there really wasn't anything for her to go back to. And so as we open, she is actively studying combat medicine so that she can keep people alive on the battlefield, although she's not quite sure what the point of that is because she's not really quite sure what the point of any of it is. And Black is obviously not her actual last name. It's a name that she chose to kind of reflect that lack of knowledge. Plus, she thought it sounded badass, and that was at a point when she felt like she needed to be a badass and now she just kind of struggles to see the point of getting through the day because tomorrow's just going to be more of the same more violence more bloodshed more death why bother so i was going to ask then like uh if if she had had harbored any aspirations of finding her family but i guess not at the moment um well, she doesn't remember the planet they were from. She doesn't remember her last name. Those pirates are not known for really leaving people alive, so it's kind of surprising that they kidnapped a child, and there's no clear reason why they would. I mean, they didn't take any of the other children, so why her? Hmm. Um, I don't know if I missed it, but like, how did you get separated from the pirates? The mercenary crew was sent out oh, yes. to I'm basically on a kill mission to get rid of them. And it's like, oh, crap, there's a kid here. We're not complete assholes. We can't just let this kid die. So fine. I guess we've got a four-year-old with us now. Just don't get stepped on by a mech. Okay. How did you end up working in this particular squad then, do you think? Like I said, she had to earn her keep somehow. 
You know, they, they weren't just going to feed her for no reason. So, you know, they started her off showing her how to use screwdrivers, drills, tools, you know, doing very, very basic repairs. Like, you know, here's how you bolt this piece of metal on. And they had to, yeah, basically baby Yoda for them. Um, oh, sorry. I meant like, how did you, how did you get involved in this squad? As in this, this, uh, this group we have here. Oh, okay. This squad. Honestly, I have no idea. I just got tapped on the shoulder and said, yeah, you're with them now. And it's like, fine, whatever. Okay. One crew is as good as any other crew. Just, just leave me alone. If you I know? may interject a bit, it seems like my character was sort of given to this crew as like a uh, dumping ground. Like we owe you a position, have this. <clears throat> it could be you were swept up in that. Like we're going to get a lot of people who need a squad and dump them on the front lines. Well, and I think another part of it is actually that kind of impromptu medic background and the kind of medic training that she had been going through because, you know, her special ability is doctor. So it's not just that she can patch up a mech, she can patch up the person inside it. So she's kind of like, uh, in, in terms of repairing mechs and people physically, She's got a handle on all that. Emotionally and psychologically, I, that you're on your own. That's not my job. I can't even do that for myself. Mm. Although everyone does get does get plus one D to healing rolls, which is very good. Um, I'm just saying right now. <laughs> uh, mechanically, anyway. Sorry, that's a, that's a bad thing to interject. Right, Leander, um, it's almost like I looked at all the other characters and then tried to figure out something that would slot in nicely and cooperatively to help everybody else out. Oh, you didn't just pick an ability you think is really cool, which is also valid, um, but that's very nice of you. Well, was like. that or Sharpshooter? <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, yeah, Sharpshooter is uh, oh, that's a, that's a fine uh, ability. But, but I figured um, being able to patch people up might be a little more important, considering this is not a one shot. Yeah, this is a this is a and you are a frontline squad. Um, so let's talk about that squad. Um, we'll get to the uh, the, the the faction working for the monarchy, but let's sort out this squad first uh, because there's some mechanical stuff we have left to do. Uh, let's see. Let me find the uh, the bit where we the actual squad creation bit in the book. Give me a second. Uh, there is a there, the contents page in this book is pretty good, but it's long, and most of the time it is sorting out like most of them are on the same page, like oh, example officer stuff, but like it's all on the same page anyway, so it just makes it look long. All right, squad creation. Oh, I should one last thing for pilots uh, before we go into the squad. You notice that yeah, you have slots there for big ass rival and a bunch of allies. Uh, rivals, you know how it is in Forge in the Dark. You got your list of like, oh, here's my ally, here's my rival. It's a bit different here in Beam Saber. Um, rivals, well, you can choose not to start with one, and later on you can declare an NPC to be a rival. Um, you can do that anytime, either here in character creation or during play, so you don't have to start with a rival. Rivals, rivals are dope, but they are they're like boss fights, basically. If they ever show up, they're intense. You get to you have your own connection with your rival that you put in your connection sheet. That's why the sheet is like four slots instead of just three. Um, and they get to do some messed up stuff. Whenever a rival shows up on screen, it's an eight tick clock to get rid of them. Um, and they don't, and they can't permanently be defeated unless you use up your drive clocks. Um, so they'll always get away, and they can inflict consequences at any time, uh, as as many times as as many times there are players. So if a rival shows up, I can just say, "Oh, they've unleashed your electromagnetic missiles. You are now in a desperate position. That's a consequence." Oh, uh, they they've thrown a a electric javelin i don't know why this rivals electricity theme um they've thrown an electric javelin through your mech you have level three damage that's a consequence rivals are rivals are dope but they're tough so if you um don't worry we won't see like four of them at once happening that would be ridiculous um allies are like 
you can you can declare some allies, but once per session, you can declare like, oh, I have an ally that I can help with in in this mission. And then you then you tell me when was the last time you all interacted with each other. You're gonna roll an action and see what your relationship with that ally is, and then maybe they can help you um, in in the mission. So you don't have to list allies at the start. You can declare like, oh, I know this person, they can help. Um, so that's rivals and allies. So yeah, you don't have to create rivals now. Uh, if you have an idea, like, feel free to do so. But um, actually, we've been here for an hour. I always like to take hour hour long breaks. Let's take five. That's okay, and then we'll do squad stuff. Um, hopefully, that'll be quick, and then yeah, we'll see where we where we tip on. So we'll yeah, be back in five minutes. You know, I'll just share this video.
There was a nicer way to just stop the video instead of just going, you know, it's all, it's all gone. <laughs> Sorry, there's some the players are having a nice chat in the chat there. Um, oh, yeah, I see that new mech. Jesus. Um, ah, fancy. We, we definitely need to see that action later so you can describe what it looks like to anyone who might be watching. But we'll leave that for later. All right, so everyone says they're back. Um, yeah, so let's look at our squad. All right, so let's go. I was just gonna go, I'm just gonna go through this squad creation, uh, step by step. Uh, we already did bits of it, so that, that's easy enough. So, the first thing is you choose your squad's patron faction. The faction will determine what bonus supplies you get for completing missions and guide what goal your faction is working on. Uh, if you all pick the but the consensus went to the autocracy. Uh, we flipped it to the monarchy, uh, which is the the alternative that's in the book. All the all the factions have their alternatives. Like um, the oligarchy has a cryptocracy, I think. Um, yeah, which is which is weird. And that, that's the only one I've looked. There's there are other examples, but I've not looked at them. Um, but yeah, we picked for the monarchy. So the name I put down is the Kingdom of Ymir. Works out that while we go through the squad, um, we need to determine like what it actually what the name is. It used to be the Dominion of Ymir, but that sounds that's that's that sounds like an autocracy for sure. Um, feel free to shout any suggestions in the chat when we go through it. The rest of this, oh, we're from the Crips, yeah. Um, note that while the squad's patron faction does not necessarily own the squad, it does expect them to follow its orders and work towards its interests. So, so like, there is no reason why y'all can't split off from your patron faction. That totally has happened. Switching factions has happened before. It might take like a, something dramatic happening in the series, you know, play to find out. But it totally has happened. If you want to work for what is the corporatocracy name? I put in Terra Fortunata Incorporated. They saw they sound like a fun bunch. I don't know. Uh, probably not. <laughs> don't don't work for them. They sound, they, they're probably terrible. Um, um, the crypt guys. Uh, let's see. Set your relationship with each faction to zero. They don't know or care about the squad. What they don't her, her, they don't know or care who the squad is. So they perform some missions for and against them. Yep. Um, create an NPC who is the direct superior of the squad. This is someone that the GM can often use to assign the squad missions and who the squad will have a connection to for good or for ill. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I was poking around in the, in the name generator, and I got uh, August Friedland. Um, I think we now have to make them a duke or a duchess. 
Um, <laughs> sorry, there's some chat about Crips in the in the chat. I was like, whoa, how did we? Hmm. Okay. Um, I'll go, yeah. Okay. All right. August Freeland. Uh, is she her? Is she, so is she a duchess? Is she a, <laughs> or is she a knight? Uh, what do you think? It, should, it feels like she's someone who's been tapped to watch over y'all misfits and their dwells, uh, for sure. Um, probably stern, a big believer, baroness. There we go. Yes, thanks, Sabine. Um, Viscountess. Ooh, maybe you can up, be up against a Viscountess, baroness. Baroness, I'm gonna put that down. Baroness August, August Friedland. Yes, so she's your direct superior. Um, we'll meet her hopefully in a sec. Um, one squad is friendly with the direct superior, so take plus one status with them and describe the connection. And another squad dislikes the direct superior, take minus one status. Oh, this is, squads are like you know how in blade in blades they're like your other factions and whatnot. Um, the way Beam Saber's faction system works is there are five big factions, like the autocracy and the oligarchy. And there are squads underneath, which are like sub-factions. Um, you are one such squad in the autocracy, and you have relationships with other squads. Um, I guess we, I, we, we've not fleshed out this world enough that I don't want to make up squads at the moment. So let's just determine what faction do you think our direct superior, uh, uh, which squads from from which fa which faction you think would have a dislike or a like to our direct superior? The theocracy. <laughs> I would say either the theocracy or the democracy. Hmm. I do want to get into a fight with the theocracy. Uh, Really, uh, as a fascist state, I could see us being enemies with any of these factions, you know? But are well, we? Yeah, well, that is the thing. I mean, it's a monarchy. Yeah. Who's to say it isn't a benevolent king? Who's to say it isn't something like, uh, not to go to the really bad Star Wars movies, but Naboo, <laughs> where the queen is kind of an elected position almost? Hmm. We did, we did, we did establish like <laughs> nobility is one true merit. So to speak, although the kind of merit is probably fluid. Um, yeah. Um, no, I'll say let's get. Uh, let's say a squad that doesn't like her is from the theocracy. I'll say that, and probably like there are other squads under your your patron faction. We can say like one of them likes her. Um, probably some noble house. Um, yeah, born to the right family. Very meritocratous. Uh, I'm gonna write that down. Let's see, plus one autocracy, and then and minus one uh, theocracy. Oh, the name for the theocracy that I put down, uh, the the random name is the Exalted Mandate. They're they've got a mandate, and they're gonna carry it out for sure. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. All right, so answer Scott Superior. Uh, choose a goal for your patron faction. Um, so each you it, actually should point out where in the sheet all of this stuff is. If you go to the squad sheet and you scroll down past the squad stuff, that's where all the faction stuff is. Um, so that's where the names of the patron factions are. Um, each in each major faction has a goal, and you could be pushing your and there are like specific types of goals here. Um, and you could be pushed and you could be doing missions to uh further that goal and once you like fill the four step clock towards a goal you get benefits you get cool stuff so there are let me find the goals oh so there are a couple one two three four five six seven there are eight different kinds of faction goals and i'll go through them each one and then i'll make your pick so the first one is assault the foe you just could be this is very straightforward soften up a specific enemy held region in preparation for capture this can be done by just attacking the region cutting that area from reinforcements gaining intel about the district's weak points etc this is like the most direct we fighting sort of goal um there is divided they fall this is manipulate the enemy's plans plans this can be done by planting false orders and in intelligence false flag uh disrupting communications pitting enemies against each other etc 
There's Golden Streets. This is improving the supply situation of the patron faction. This can be done by, you know, giving supplies to your patron faction, refusing supply roles, just helping the general logistics of your of your faction. There's Hearts and Minds. This is change the popular opinion of a faction in a manner that benefits your benefits your patron faction. So this can be done by, you know, being knights of shining armor protecting the populace from the marauding uh, theocratic mandate or whatever or publicizing the corruption of an enemy faction shifting shifting tastes in support etc this is you know winning hearts and minds this is the propaganda goal uh after that no, next after that is hostile takeover this is denying the enemy supplies this, this can be done by you know blockading uh destroying infrastructure this is uh to back, piggyback on pocket it's star wars reference this is what the trade federation was doing um in episode one i'm in the middle of watching that movie actually it's whoo it's, it's a movie all right um yeah so that's hostile takeover you're basically trying to cut off their lifeblood uh through wrecking their supplies uh next after that is intelligence coup uh, that steal viable information from the enemy. This can be done by acquiring VIPs, retrieving actionable intel, stealing their technological advances, just making sure you have more intelligence than they do. Uh, second last one is manufacture heroes. Now this one is this one's this one is acting against a specific squad at least two tiers higher than your squad. Uh, I bumped you up to a tier one. Um, so that means you'll be going up against like tier three or four. Um, uh, basically this is punching above your weight. Your faction needs heroes. They needs, they need, they need, you know, names to rally out towards. Um, so, you, you, so this is picking a fight. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, you're going to be a scrappy dude, so to speak, um, against the, the bigger fish in this world. And the last goal is secure borders. This is taking proactive measures to protect your faction. This is, you know. Uh, weakening neighboring regions, constructing defenses, removing enemy agents, acting against your faction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's a lot of stuff. I'm gonna find the, the shorter list and I'll put that in the chat so I can have a look through them again. But yeah, I kind of like punching up or softening up an area. So. I like the hearts and minds. Uh with like us being um, heroes to a certain like city or uh, county kind of thing, or the assault. I the, will say, uh, them up. Actually, I'll get what what Sabine and Alex think. Uh, what what they're interested in, and I'll actually tell you when you accomplish those goals, you get rewards. So, and specific rewards for each goal. Um, but yeah, Alex, Sabine, what do you? What sounds interesting to you? I mean, I like secure the borders, but I'm fine with kind of anything. Um, I don't know about hearts and minds if we're really that socially um, adroit, but I guess, or maybe we get go punching up. Punching up sounds fun anyway. Sounds like punching. Yeah, I'm not. I, I I'm not sure. I like whether changing popular opinion. I can see like protecting the populace from marauders, uh, but uh, yeah, I like punching ab above uh, our weight. I like secure the borders. Um, honestly, I'm flexible, but those are probably the two I would uh, lean towards. Can we only select one? Yeah, but the thing is, when you when you accomplish one, you can move on to another. Like uh, you check that yeah, there's the, those four check boxes next to go I've, I've checked one uh just because want to get a head start but yeah each mission if you think you've you've put towards effort into accomplishing that goal you get a tick and once that tick fills up you accomplish a goal and you can move on to a new one uh say what the rewards are for getting uh, for finishing those goals for assault the foe the softening up one you get the vengeful benefit your squad's righteous anger empowers your, their actions when making an action roll against a squad that employs any player's rival, you take improved effect. So you could you could be like down to your last limbs, desperate, 
effect. You got a gun that's done to your last clip, so you have limited effect. But so long as you that you're up against a squad that has your rival, you're gonna you're gonna get more than limited. You're gonna get standard, uh, for sure. That's for getting that goal. So you, but that means having to face against a rival. So, um, what does that have to be the rival? It could be just either squad. Um, for let's see, manufactured heroes. Um, you get the poster child benefit. Uh, now that you're heroes, your faction needs to keep you alive without removing you from the action. A pilot can push themselves for only one stress a number of times per session equal to their squad's tier, a minimum of one, but revealing how another squad belonging to their patron, patron faction assisted them. So basically, like, once per session, usually pushing yourself costs two stress. Um, actually, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. But now, but now, once per session, you can say, "Oh, only one stress." And also, we got help from our friends, you know. Um, and the mo the higher your tier is, the more times you can do that per session. So now you're in tier one, so you can only do it once per session. That's what we get from manufacturing heroes. Um, for uh, let's see, what was the other? What was the other goal that folks were interested in? I think those are the two main ones. People were saying. Um, if you want to know what the other goals, what what you get, their benefits, uh, you can ask. I think secure the borders was another one we were interested in. Oh yes. Um. Okay. That that one's fairly simple. Uh, you get nano laminate armor. Basically, um, you get very nice molecular thin layers of ceramic alloy composite that are elect. Electromagnetically bonded to each other to create armor that is half the weight. Armor in mechs are two. They take up a load of two. But if once you get this, you just take up a load of one. And you can use armor a lot in a mech. So say a missile is going to hit you and it's going to take two hard. You can say, and normally armor costs two load, but with that benefit, you get one. Uh, it only costs one. So there, so it's very useful. You, you want to use the armor for sure because you don't want to get harm or damage in this game because it takes a lot to get rid of it. Uh, you got some good options. So I think of those, I like securing the border the best uh, with assaulting the foes uh, coming next and uh, punching above my weight being my last choice at the moment. <laughs> How does everyone feel? Yeah, I still like securing the border and punching above our weight. Maybe we can wait until we have a bit more weight and experience, even as players. I mean, it's the same. yeah, but the thing is, you, you're still going to be punching above your weight. So, say you yeah, make up to level two, but, be up as, against... but as players, we'll be most more used to each other and to strategies that work. So, yeah, I'm strategizing That's... now. Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, Pocket, Alex, are you fine with securing the borders? You know um, me, I show up to play. Yeah. Yeah. Or assault. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading. Um, no worries. Uh, ooh, that, that's way too big. There you go, secure the borders. Um, I put one tick there because we, we only hit, we're only here for like four more sessions after this. Um, we would like to try and accomplish it once. Actually, you know what? No, we got two ticks. There we go. So we can actually accomplish it. Um, all right. So that's so we got the patron uh, goal. Now we move on to our actual squad. We've chosen the next one is choose a squad playbook. We've got that. Um, that is our our frontline <laughs> squad. So it's gonna be fun. Um, next is you're gonna choose an initial reputation and a forward operating base. Um, when you reinforce your reputation in a mission, the squad marks one XP. And there is a list of options. But feel free to pick anything. This is the reputation that either you're going to try to live up to or try to move away from um, during a mission. And it gets you XP. So the examples they have here are stuff like an ambitious, honorable, professional, amoral, menacing, daring, destructive, subtle, or strange, or savvy. Or uh, for some reason, the word incompetent spread to my mind, but you're not incompetent. <laughs> you're, you're professionals. What do you think your squad's reputation is then? Rack attack. 
Frag <laughs> I mean, the thing is, it ha- oh, I don't think ahead. Alex is wrong there. I think like underdog might be a good one too. Like I like ragtag mm-hmm. as well. I mean, it, it kind of feels like we're a squad of misfits that got thrown together because they needed to do something with us, and they figured that at least by throwing us all together, we wouldn't hurt anybody useful. Oh wow. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Wow. I'm not a misfit. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not a misfit either. I'm a soldier. I mean, you might not be too happy about it, but uh, I, I'm professional, I guess, more or less. Unless I'm drunk. I... <laughs> oh, oh, is that going to happen? Okay. <laughs> um, I do like ragtag. I do want to like remind folks that it should be something a bit you should be able to reinforce so you can XP. Ragtag sounds reinforceable, but I that's like... true. I'll put that down anyway. Ragtag. Um, forward operating base. Give me a second. Well, I think there might be something in the book about that. You can that. reinforce it by screwing up. <laughs> you absolutely Ooh. can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, up. try not to crew up get xp that's uh pbta in a nutshell right yeah yeah well it isn't pbta so oh damn lineage. damn yeah oh well that you're, you're in the dark zone we're in the dark zone that's cool done. No, it's not called the Dark Zone. <laughs> Apologies to John Harper. It's not called the Dark Zone. It should be. Um, all right. Man, what a name. It's got a brand. It's a, It's got a. It's got a verb by the noun uh, name. So no, it's called Fortune of the Dark. The original game was called the Dark Zone. Really? Uh, That's why it's called Fortune in the Dark. Oh, I. Not because. It's- it's dark. I, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> it's probably not. Um, it is okay. absolutely not. All right. I will not. From that's now on, I will totally believe that and tell it to everybody I meet, and see how many people I can confuse. So, thank you. I mean, Dosbo is a proper dark zone. Um, <laughs> all right. So, forward operating base is basically just. What do you think your base looks like? Like, um, where are you all in sconce, so to speak? I like the idea of it being kind of makeshift. And by makeshift, I mean total garbage. But we like to call it makeshift because it makes us feel better about it. You know, like some surplus tents maybe. And maybe there's like a building that they've, slighted for demolition because it should be condemned and they let us have that but didn't tell us i'm kind of on the opposite end we've sort of talked about the uh war the people who do war being sort of nobles or at least the leaders being nobles so if it is going to be uh like if it is going to be like just demolished and run down i would like it to be like a run down old like a place that isn't demolished because it was a site of the city or a um, like, like a former castle. Yes, like you know, it should yeah. be demolished by like yeah. it, it should be condemned, but it's not because it's historical. Oh, I like I like that rundown opera house. That's uh, that sounds uh, that sounds yeah, cool. I like that. Yes, that worked for me. That's going to be interesting. The only thing I'll add is sort of like it's. Would you say it's? I'm, I'm imagining this in a place. I'm. I need this to be a place where you can store your mechs. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. I will, don't. Well, I mean, like, the operas in these day and age have to use their own kind of like mechs themselves for these plays that are like oh, fake battle mechs. So, I mean, the yeah. basement of the opera house can house mechs. Sure, and the stage oh, can yeah. support mechs. Well. Yeah, maybe not the not, like, not the heavyweight, know, but the the more um the smaller ones. Sure, you can have an opera with mechs in it. And of course, if this was a real like anime, uh, our 
uh, mecha engagement scenes would have the mechs being raised onto the stage every time. Uh, yeah, like like the stage is our staging area, right? Which we use before we go into a mission like that. So if that's the case, then what does that mean? Like the front of the opera house has just been blown out. So, I mean, how do we get the mechs out of the opera house? Oh, well, we have, uh, we can uh, slide off the roof. I mean, it's a sliding roof. Or maybe yeah. it's destroyed. The, the sliding roof is open. Um, and it don't, doesn't move anymore, so it rains inside. But yeah. um, you know, it's like a music box almost. Like the uh, the outside is really intact, but like the roof caved in. So, are we assuming that all of Mormex have jump jets? Is there heavy machinery on this roof that caved in to lift Max out? Because I mean, if the roof caved in, could be that the. Uh... We've reinforced where the roof caved in to make it a actual ramp to get the mechs out. Yeah, I mean, I this place is run down, but I imagine it would have been like modified somewhat to be um, suitable for a military base. Yes. Uh, like I, I imagine we would have, you know, whatever platforms we need, and uh, I, I imagine it would have the basic necessities. Uh, for it have mo been modified to have the basic necessities for a base like this. Leandro, it's just also there's opera house ornamentation. <laughs> Give me an idea of the scale we're talking about in size of mechs in terms of like height. Are you um, talking a hundred feet tall, two hundred feet tall, thirty feet tall? Um, not not nothing that big. I'm basing it around. Let's see. I I just found out today that the the Gundam, the Gundam, the mobile suit Gundam, it, that's a sixty foot mech. Um, okay, so, so we're use that like as kind of like, meters. Yeah. So that's kind of like that's kind of like the I'm imagining that's a typical scale of an average mech. Okay, so that's about six stories. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we just use the old parking lot for our max. We yeah, live like in the opera maybe there's been the some kind of cover built or something um, like that, camouflage. So you know we're inside the opera side. I mean, the opera house is where we like a barracks, but we have a garage built outside of it or some of some sort. Oh, Alex. Yeah, I'm imagining again. the. Oh no. The main turn is just weird. I can't see. Oh, there we go. That's fair. good. Hey, you're back. Didn't yeah, yeah. I'm imagining like time, the so. opera house, kind of like the. Oh yeah, that thankfully. Yeah, I'm imagining then this opera house, kind of like the front, but like this brace sprawls out to the back, like where the parking lot is, because part of y'all you can get upgrades like a radio station or an airfield or something as part of the F uh, forward operating basis upgrades but i imagine yeah the upper house is kind of like your nerve center like command center um uh, parts of it like the offices and like and you can totally launch out from the stage for sure but like the entire base sprawls out from the back does that make sense mm-hmm yeah, maybe this this uh, opera house is really old and used to have a touristic infrastructure at one point where they had several other buildings and uh, maybe even a landing site, an airport, an airfield, sorry, um, or something like or that. Or just a helicopter pad. Yeah, exactly. And we, uh oh, Landers grayed out. Oh no! It's not me this time. <laughs> We have to talk to to the Ireland king or, or the Irish king, I guess. Oh, there we go. They still have one. Oh, there he is. Oh, hi. No, we we don't have kings, um, unless you count uh, WWE wrestler Sheamus, who won King of the Ring back in 2011, when he was on. Sorry, he was, he was the Celtic king of WWE for a time. Um, no, uh, so, sorry, I missed. Yeah, my, I missed some of that. What else do the upper house have, Sabine, you were talking about? Like some kind of helicopter pad or like a VTOL pad. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see if we have that for upgrades because you are meant starting out, starting squads are meant to have like a fairly unimpressive 
uh, <laughs> FOB. Um, that's forward operating base. Um, so we'll see if you have an airfield. We'll see. <laughs> um, but first, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, Alex is grayed out. Oh, no. Darn you, Internet. Um, and if it's meant to be fairly unimpressive, maybe maybe we, we just have, like, tarps out back covering the mechs. You know, trying to make it look like oh, it's... So if something's flying overhead, you know, they're not going to see him as well easily. I'd be down for that. Oh, there goes Alex. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the idea. Yeah, your mechs are just out in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> Tarp. Um, <laughs> oh. Leandro, if you want to use StreamYard instead of Jitsi, I mean, I could host it. I haven't any games in this uh, this month, so because oh. I, because these connection problems, I haven't seen them that badly in StreamYard. Yeah, Jitsi yeah. Is, uh, bad for at least one person that I've seen. Yeah, <laughs> the connection <laughs> problems are at least partly on my end. Uh, I've been having some issues, and I need to talk to my landlord about them oh, okay. at some point. Uh, so it may not be at least for me. It's might not be Jitsi's fault. It's just periodically like I don't know. okay thought it was better but apparently not <laughs> <laughs> um yeah okay so i think yeah i'm I, we got a sense now of like where y'all are like based off uh rundown opera house sprawled out to the back parking lot tarps uh which apparently are very expensive all over your mechs uh, in the parking lot. Maybe we'll get to the opera stage opens up and you can launch off it. But right now, you're, you're not at the tier to get that. Um, next, we'll pick your squad special ability. It's basically like a playbook ability. If you go to the special abilities tab, um, scroll down. Um, front line is like starts at H22. Um, and there should be a list of abilities. There's a tab in the character keeper for special abilities. Um, I obviously, I would extremely uh, suggest Forged in the Fire. <clears throat> uh, let me read that out for anyone might be watching. Each PC has been toughened by cruel experience. You get plus one D to resistant rolls, and you exhaust one fewer quirk for vehicle resistance. Basically, you're, you'll be able to say uh, uh, to your consequences a lot. Um, with that special ability. And it certainly fits with our characters. Yeah, I like that too. Ooh, blades in the fire. Ooh, that's, that's the fire emblem hack of Band of Blades I've been waiting. Um, oh, someone do a tree house. Is okay, I'm going to get distracted by that. File idea for later. Um, all right. I'll put in Forge in the Fire. Oh, nope. Didn't, that didn't go as, as I thought it would. I'll do that later. Um, all right. So, oh, yeah. Frontline starts out with two um, abilities. Uh, two upgrades. So Sorry, not abilities. No, you only get that one uh, at the start. Let's, let's not get, not get profligate here. Um, uh, there we go. Okay, so... Frontline starts with two upgrades. One is uh, prowess training. Uh, one of the training that basically lets you add an XP point to one of your attribute trackers. Uh, for and the but the prowess upgrade means you can add two XP to your prowess. Uh, those are those are the abilities that involve you know finesse, prow, fighting basically. Um, so that's one of your starting upgrades. Your other starting upgrade is that you have a cohort. Cohorts are like your support teams. They're like your hired goons, so to speak, your minions, your, your people who work for you. Um, you've got the cohort type you got are toughs. So they're killers or bouncers or warriors. Um, so you've got so you've got a you've you've got a support team, basically. Um, not the most impressive bunch, but well, you got one. 
are they soldiers in the in the army or are these just uh, mercenaries? Uh, well, you tell me. What do you, what do you think? Um, they are. I think it'd be kind of funny if they were a street gang that kind of adopted us and just started hanging around that we couldn't get rid of. <laughs> and they sort of actually started becoming something like soldiers. So are they what, we drafted them? They aspire maybe to become soldiers, and I'm not sure if I want them to have that. Yeah, I like the idea. And, and, and not drafted so much as they just wouldn't go away, so we started giving them things to do and trying to teach them how to be useful and not die. Yeah, I like, I like that. Down. Yeah, that's, that's fun. Right. I am down Kubica with it. hates it, but I'm of, down. I'm down with it on one, uh, I guess, stipulation. Uh, mm -hmm. The head of this gang was one of the people I saved from my... Uh, Tragedy. Sure. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Gives them a reason. Explains why they wouldn't go away. Yeah, this person kept me alive once. It may happen again. Here, <laughs> let, let me put myself in close proximity to danger to test this theory. That's what we call science. Yeah, well, maybe they have nowhere else to go, <laughs> right? Because the life is hard if you live in a war zone. I can totally, I'm, I, to, I can totally get these guys. Don't know how to talk to them, but I get them. Yeah, and maybe it's not three hots and a cot, but you know they get like one and a half hots and sometimes a cot. <laughs> they get to sleep in the mechs when the mechs aren't on the move. Um, there's one, two more things you need. Yep, room in those mechs. Um, all there's right, no so room you're gonna choose in my mech. There's definitely no room in oh, no, your mech my guns. <laughs> your mech's so chunky, though. Uh, how does it not have room? Um, it's a full all right, so you need to add two things. <laughs> God, you know, adorable. So we need to do two things for the cohort. You're going to choose one or two edges. The edge is what is a trait of theirs that they're good at. Um, so you've got one, two, three. You got four choices. Either they're fearsome, which is terrifying in aspect and notoriety. Uh, they're independent, able to make good decisions and take action without direct orders. Or uh, loyal, can't be bribed or turned against the squad. Or tenacious, won't be deterred from a task. I like loyal and tenacious. Sounds like these guys are. Well, they won't go away, right? So yeah. they're pretty much tenacious. Those were the exact two I was going to vote for. Yeah, and I was going to say, at the very least, loyal. Um, I was thinking about having about them having the ability to make good decisions on their own, but I think they've actually by hanging around with us, they've kind of disproved that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the next, the last thing is you're going to choose as many flaws for the cohort as it has edges. Um, so you had a choice of only picking one edge, but you pick two. Um, so the flaws are either they're brutal, which is excessively violent and cruel, or uh, eager, will act without orders for the squad's best interests, uh, principled, has an ethic or va value it won't betray, uh, obligation, not always available due to other responsibilities, uh, like uh, they got other stuff, they got other, they got other irons on the fire. Or they're wild, which is you know drunken or debauchery or loud mouthed. So you're gonna pick two out of those five uh, flaws. I'm thinking principled and eager. I mean, yeah. just, just, despite us being a ragtag motley crew, we are principled. We do have lines we won't cross. And I think in their case, maybe they're eager to show themselves and prove, eager to prove themselves, show their value and their worth, and maybe that gets them into trouble. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally sold on eager, not so much on principled. I think maybe they have other obligations because they still need to scrounge food and stuff like that. But I'd be down with principled as well. But. Yeah, I am I really agree with eager, but I'm not sure on either principled or obligations. I, I can see either of those working. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Alex, what about you? I mean, I think principled works best if the majority of like the 
players are less principled. Uh, and it seems like most of us are at least moderately principled. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. So maybe eager and wild then? Yeah, they're street. They're they're a bit they're a bit rough around the edges. Sorry, Fred. What did you say? My internet. They're came. they're a street gang. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I like wild better than brutal or whatever the first one was. It was brutal. They're um, not brutal. I... They're just wild. Uh, wild. Wild, I like. Yeah, they're rowdy. Wild and rowdy. They're ruffians. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those are the two upgrades you all start with. You get to choose two more. Um, these are like tools or personnel and facilities the squad can use. So you got two pre-selected ones, and you also get to choose two more, either from the squad playbook. Uh, there are specific squad upgrades uh, down below. It's underneath the direct superior and patron faction. Uh, and but also there there is a, there is a big list of general. Uh, I put notes on what they do when you actually get them, um, but you do have like specific frontline uh, rig uh, upgrades as well, and you get two. So which ones interest you? All? Is there any kind of medical bay or medical suite option? Um, there's an infirmary. There's an infirmary uh, thingy. Infirmary, yeah. Okay. I think I like having an infirmary. Well, weirdly, it just gives the squad the same benefit that my special does. Uh, they, so it, it stacks, so, so it'd be plus you get two. More. Yes, when folks uh, recover, yeah, uh, you get it stacks with your ability, so. They get extra help. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking out of the, I'm, I'm, it seems like we might want to have a way to fix our mechs and heal ourselves and our cronies if we need it. Scrapyard seems pretty good. Uh, I would suggest uh, frontline rigging or making our toughs elite it's under the uh, squad upgrades. Oh, uh, right. <clears throat> Ooh. Frontline rigging so, gets you two free load of weapons or armor. I'm pro frontline rigging. Yeah, that sounds yeah. better. I, I don't think our the way we described our, our squad, there aren't professionals yet, at least. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I would definitely suggest frontline rigging. I like the infirmary as well. Cubica will not. Cubica's drive is going to be get the squad a personal clothier. <laughs> That's not her. Are you paying her to make clothes? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, she already has a salary. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Sad. She left that uh, life behind a long time ago. <laughs> what about workshop? Ooh. Yeah, there are some like stuff that like if you don't have it, that means you you can't do stuff in the FOB. Um, like it's a, uh, it's a bit risk. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's up to you all. I think people have a consensus around frontline rigging. Oh, yeah. FOB is the forward operating base. That's the opera house. Um, maybe hidden FOB. Oh, so you won't get attacked. So, I'd rather right. have something like an infirmary or a workshop. Uh, I think definitely frontline rigging. Yeah, so have so let's have infirmary and frontline rigging. I like both. Okay, is that good with you, yourself, Pocket? Uh huh. Cool. All right. So, um, 
So a squad helped you get the upgrades. You're going to take plus one status with them. And another squad was denied those upgrades because you have them. You're going to take a minus one. And again, we don't have... Squads are basically like other factions. Uh, I've already explained what they are. They're basically like yourselves. Um, I get the feeling both of these upgrades would be taking away or, or you getting from other squads within your faction, within the monarchy as well. Does that make sense? Cool. Uh, and we'll flesh them out in a minute, but we're coming up to another hour. I think, I think, yeah, I think we're just about done with all the character stuff. Now we can jump into play. Um, oh, actually, no, we'll get that. We'll get that afterwards. Uh, drives and connections. Oh, yes, connections. All right, I'll explain what they are. I should do that. So, yeah. You each have a connection with another player character, and with a rival if you come up with one. Basically, you're gonna you're you're all start with one per character or per other player character. You're just gonna write a belief about them from your character's perspective. Doesn't have to be true. It could be just what your character thinks of them, and you're gonna take one tick uh, in your connection clock. So I see uh, Cubica and Callista have some. Wow. Right. <laughs> Not favorable, are they? Cubicas are literally all just variations on this is how this person is less competent than I am. <laughs> well, there you go. That's, a, that's an insight into her. You know me. I was never going to be playing a nice person in a mecha, mecha game. <laughs> Yeah, I've got that on that. I mean, that belief isn't wrong. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> just kind of stating something that anyone could observe. <clears throat> yeah, that's connections. Give you a minute for anyone who's not made them to make some connections or actually i was gonna call for a big long break 15 minutes probably um just to give us enough separation between character creation and play um so and for me to come up with some squads so y'all can have statuses with with some squads um so Do we let's take squad name oh yeah squad name <laughs> does anyone have a anyone have a suggestion on what your name could be Well, we have an officer and sort of a scorpion next, so we can, could call ourselves the scorpions. That is a very regal looking scorpion mech. Thank you. But, um, uh, in that, uh, same vein, it could be like Emperor's Pincher, like the Emperor Scorpion. Ooh, you, uh, I mean, you are. I'll say right now, the mission I had thought of in my head, you're going to be the tip of the of the of the sting, so to speak. Hmm. Um, tip of the spear. That's what I meant. I, but you said scorpions. So I mean, mind. the Emperor's Pincher sounds. You're badass. Like, it, it makes us sound like a hell of a lot more than we are. You think that's a name that um, was assigned to y'all? Did you come up with Emperor's Thing? Don't stand, so don't stand I think down. it'd be interesting if the officer chose it and we all just kind of shrugged and said whatever. <laughs> officer? Because, I mean, that, that does kind of fit with your ambition. Yeah, I think uh, that I probably I chose it as like some kind of genuflecting gesture to the highest nobility. Yeah. Um, the other one I um, think. If no one has anything against it, we, we can go with Emperor's Painter. Yeah. 
If not, there's also like the Emperor's Sting that Alex uh, pitched out, or uh, the Queen's Venom. <laughs> Queen's Venom sounds more like it's this is my squad because your call sign is Queen. <laughs> yeah, very Amanda Waller in that. Or, <clears throat> yeah, I mean well, that could be like that could be seen as like, oh, you're putting yourself forward, are you, Queen? <laughs> Those all sound like good, good suggestions. We do need yeah. to commit to. One. I'd be happy with something like the Queen's Venom, where it like mm -hmm. you know, puts forth uh, Des as like sort of the uh, unofficial squad leader, because I think my character would really chafe under that, and that'll be fun. Ooh, okay then. I like that. Well, and also, the it's the officer. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of assumed that she was the leader because she's an officer, and it'd be weird to have an officer as a fair. You want to formalize it? Yeah, we I are. We don't want to put in command. I mean, now with all the empty whiskey bottles rolling around in the bar in the foot floor well of a mech, and I do have the prettiest mech. I mean, maybe not the most uh, practical, effective, but the prettiest. All right. Uh, so yeah, yeah, but you'll so, never look as good as me. Oh my god! At least I'm not. You're, you're, oh my god! You're all teammates. No, you to work together. Um. <laughs> all right. So I said I was gonna call for a big old 15 minute break, and I'm gonna stick to it. In the meantime, I'm gonna create some squads, create an opening uh, mission. Um. Y'all noticed that I've. Uh, directly, I've made a new tab on the on the card keeper peer. It's the city tab. It's just a general map of where we're going to be. And yes, those are border lines. This city's been carved into pieces, and we'll see where we are uh, when we come back. But yeah, fifteen minutes. Um, take a long break, stretch your legs, get some water, and I'll see you all. See how the queen's venom. Uh, how the queen's venom? Uh, how the queen? How's the queen's venom? There we go. That's that. That that's the yeah, finish and that sentence. When we get all back, right. don't forget to restart Jitsi since oh. it cuts out at two hours. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I'll take care of that. All right. You're right back. back.
And we're doing a lot of chatting in the chat. We should just do that face to face. Uh, yeah. I'd like that. Mm -hmm. I've got a rival. Okay. He is, oh, um, he's a noble man he, who uh, defected to the theocracy. But he thinks he's better than me because he's a nobleman mostly and he of course he has also he has training and money and everything really for some reason he doesn't like me well maybe for good reason maybe maybe i was uh, maybe. maybe maybe i was better at something than he was probably Okay, uh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot folks have some folks have declared rival, some folks haven't. Um, okay, and just sort it out because I'm, I'm fitting in some faction stuff as well in the squad sheet. I've, I've got some names or ideas, but like fill them out. Um, there's one that's just the. I've not thought of anything for that. It's just the. Um, that's the Black Ops unit. <laughs> the? The. 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 <laughs> they have no name. Um, they are but a murmur in people's lips. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm. <laughs> all, all the monarchy factions in my head are like different, like. Either body parts or like things people do because it's the kingdom of Ymir. I don't know who Ymir is. Um, okay. A frost giant. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Frost giant of some sort. Um, no, that's like an entire. Yeah, that's literally what uh, who Ymir was. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Okay. I've been schooled. Um, okay. So um, let's see. Where should we start? Anything else? Anyone else want to declare something? Uh, I know, Fred, you, uh, Des, you've, you've picked out a rival as well. You've declared one? Yes. I have declared a. Uh... As he many as this name sounds, Devlin from the Theocracy, uh, with her Mecca Vice God. The way I see it is, uh, <laughs> she was probably her first mission, and probably the only one that she is a. Uh, had any sort of failure at was uh, going after. Um, my uh, school and we're rivals because i'm the one who uh, i'm the one who didn't give her like a 100 percent kill ratio in that uh that mission <laughs> and she has wow. uh, so would you say like so she has taken the okay. crown from okay. a noble she killed Ooh, geez so would you say like the squad that she's part of is that kind of like their deal they're like they have a they have a kill ratio. I think like, they are uh, wet works. Like when a noble has to die, they go in. All right, I'm naming their their squad the scythe or something like that. They reap uh, the uh, like oh, yeah, the reapers or uh, the winnowers. Ooh, the winnowers. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with that. The winnowers. So you have a minus one relationship with the winnowers. Um, uh, yeah, the harvest. Oh, um, maybe they work for the harvest. I'm imagining the harvest is like probably a bigger organization. I think the harvest is like what makes their mechs, and like they have like you know like the locust unit, the uh, like all like all these mechs ma named after the plagues and things like that. Ooh. So he stands up with a mech called Vice God. Which uh, Vice God is a term for a fake pope. Oh, like an, an like an anti-pope. 
Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, uh, Sabine, is your rival? Are they part of any? Do you have a name for the squad they could be part of? Oh, they certainly have a squad. I mean, they defected to the theocracy and immediately started gathering followers because these poor benighted souls with their religion and stuff like that, they're not, um, well, they're just peons, right? They're like, like peasants. Peasants. And, and that's, I think that's what he calls them, the peasants army. They, <laughs> they kind of like oh no the squires that's what he calls them the squires because he's a knight and they are they he might knight them he offer has offered that that is pretty seditious in the theocracy but he doesn't care he's oh, um right. he's kind of the guy who had has been born with twenty thousand silver spoons in his mouth and then built them into a the crystal revelation which is his mech Oh God, that's, well, that's heavy. Um, <laughs> yeah, and right, he right. he kind of uh, was. I think he was command. It was my commander at at some point, and he for some reason I don't really know why he doesn't didn't like me. It had to do with my mech actually, and um, he sent me on a sort of a suicide mission, and um, well, I survived, and I kind of was not in the best mood when I came back, and I told him off i guess in a not very polite fashion and when he tried to get executed then his uh higher up said hey you know what this guy he meant he did everything you asked of him so maybe you know what you just you're just a poser and please stand down and then he st stood down and went over to the theocracy he's not a very good mech pilot he's a very good talker <laughs> He's a very good talker. He can talk people into all kinds of stuff. Hmm. All right. All right. That, that gives me an idea of how to use him in the future then. Um, okay. So so you now have a minus one relationship with the Squires, <laughs> um, along with the Winnowers. And I've added another Theocracy squad, the Speakers of the Sky. They, they don't like your direct superior. Um, because your direct spirit comes with a plus one and there's one squad and a minus one with another. Um, I also added you have a minus one relationship with a monarchy squad called Marrow Company. They're a squad of like scavengers. They're the ones who mop up. Um, they they have a bit of a big chip on their shoulder. They think a job of their... They feel like they've been passed over a lot. And, if, and I'm basing this on the fact that y'all got like an infirmary before they did. It's a very petty sort of relationship, um, but that's Marrow Company for you. They're kind of petty. They, they, lovely folks. Um, okay. Is there anything else I'm missing? Anyone else having more rivals on the queer? I want to save that for later. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Y'all have a doctor, so that's probably why you got the infirmary before they did. They are, <coughs> they're, they're living in their own world. Hmm. Okay, so um, I've I've revealed. Uh, yeah, I've made a tab of uh, called the city uh, show up in the character keeper. Um, this is kind of like at least where we're starting. This uh, city, um, shout outs to the medieval fantasy city generator, um, and you can see that like it's been it's been claimed uh, into multiple <laughs> through multiple pieces. Um, to uh, uh, by by the different factions and your monarchy, the kingdom of Ymir, uh, is probably the least part of it. Now, why would the city be so important that all these factions have come together? Well, there you see the big like blocky building in the middle where where kind of like three of those factions kind of meet uh, are fighting over um, that. That is where what I'm. That is where what I'm imagining in this world. That's where like there is a this. I'm trying to figure out the words. They're losing their fair. Being lost my mind. But there is like a there's like a gigantic like port there. It's a sort of star port. Um, and it's like it's like 
Do you know those like mass relays and mass effect? These big engines that let you shoot across uh, the faster than faster than light. Um, it's kind of like that. It's a big sort of natural engine uh, connected to the Earth. It's it's a oh that's a good name. I mean, it's a it's it's a trebuchet engine. It lets you fling ships and goods and whatnot from um, one. From one from one planet to another, and this and they're tethered to like another planet. It's like a one. It's like a two way road, so it's very important. And the city, I'm imagining it's as big as kind of like some of our big cities. I imagine it's like a New York's, maybe not actually. The let me. See. It's big enough that the five factions have have a have claim it to it. So I'm imagining it's kind of like New York size. So there's like millions of millions of people here because again it's an important uh uh it's an important city uh what did i call this let me look at my notes um uh ooh. i don't think i wrote down a name for the city magnum city there we go so this could be a trebuchet or it could be a gun i guess is what we're what we're calling it um yeah it's not just the city. We can't do that. This isn't like an, a Blades in the Dark or an Urban Shadow sort of game. No, this is this is Magnum City, um, and it's very important because these trebuchet engines they're not easy to make. No, no, just so, so, I mean we've, we've left Prospect City behind. Um, yeah. So I think I want to start with I want a quick snapshot. <laughs> I say quick snapshot. This is kind of like the anime opening, I guess. Um, I want two things from each of you. What your character is doing, like on their downtime. What snapshot we get in the anime opening, as we kind of like as the imagine the code chaos opening. I hate myself. Um, I'm imagine, yeah. So what, what each character is doing in like their downtime? Oh, go ahead. Uh, what about the drives? Do we have to define them now, or should oh we yes, 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 yes. Uh, we should do that. Yes. Okay. Cool. So, so we kind of had to talk about drives, but like, do you want to like lay them out each each of your characters? I just like really want to know what they are. Actually, I mean, they're obviously some kind of long term goal we're looking for. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah. There's. Uh. I'll start with you. Um. Uh. Des, what, what's your drive? Probably to um, get all of us into a better position, whatever that means for each of us. But I want I want us to succeed in the monarchy. Okay. So that could either be like long term survival or political. Um, machinations yeah yeah and uh, once once you have like those drive clocks yeah you can totally make that happen succeed in the monarchy okay <laughs> sounds good um uh cubica uh, uh yeah i don't know if this is like too small to be a drive but i was just thinking like she wants to find out why she was suddenly transferred out of this black ops unit that she had spent like 10 years in. Oh, wow. You were, you were in that unit for that long. Okay. I'm thinking, cause I'm thinking she's like, you know, a fair bit older than she looks. Uh, she's been in this. I don't know how old everybody out there's characters are, but like, she's probably <clears throat> been a soldier since before like Des was born. Um, Fair enough. Uh, Jesus. But yeah, and I think that's, so that that's time totally was not spent in this sort of like in the trenches, sort of uh, uh, you know frontline warfare. Most of it was you know, secret assassinations. Yeah, fair enough. Um, 
I think I think that's that that's solely something that's like a very long term goal. Like you can't complete that with one long term project, uh, for sure. Okay, uh, Lars, or is it Lars or Yaren? Uh, it's I think it's Yaren. Yaren is the called name. Lars is just the mine where he came from, I guess. But he has no other last name, so the army said, "Okay, that's your last name now." Congratulations. About his name, real name, but, but his, his full name is Yaren. Um, his goal is to get out of this war situation with some kind of future for himself and his people, which are the other people who were in that mine and who joined the army. Yeah, absolutely. That's 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 a big goal. Um, and Callista, the other drive. Finding a reason to give a shit about making it till tomorrow. Fair enough. <laughs> and if that is an ongoing drive, I don't know what is. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you can you can change your drives. Um, these things are flexible. Although it will take it will take a full drive clock to change them. Um, that's the thing. You know, don't move on. Uh, you can't move on from like those drives as easy as you'd want to. Okay, so back to our uh, driving anime opening. Um, so yeah, what like in the in the shots of this like opener? What I want two things from your characters. I want to see a shot of them as kind of like them good doing their day to day, like I don't know, cooking or looking out in the night sky, brooding or playing with basketball with with your gang of rowdy boys. Um, <laughs> One and the other is them doing something cool in their mech, or something, something with their mech. Uh, and I'll defer to whoever has an idea first. I think I do. Which I think, like this uh, anime opening gets started, we see you know the Queen's Venom or whatever the title of this uh, Beam Saber game is, and. Uh, you know, it, it's a starry night out. It pans down to the opera house, and we see uh, it go into one of the windows, and Queen is uh, playing around with this chessboard, uh, which, like, this three dimensional chessboard with the theocracy, the corporates, and the democracy going up against the monarchy. She moves one piece, looks out the window, and you can see just the moonlight reflecting in her eyes. And, uh, then uh, what's next is the moon turns into a gun barrel. Several missiles are fired at her. Uh, it pulls back out, and she's in the scorpion mech. She uh, slams down the uh, the pincers as a shield against the missiles. <gasps> oh, no. We, we lost our healer. Damn. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there, <laughs> Oh no. All right. We'll give a Pocket a chance to come back because I don't think he'd want to have missed the rest of your kick ass opening. Bullets, Jesus. Um... It's extreme. I, I don't know enough anime openings to have this answer, but I think it is extremely important to me that we figure out like what our opening theme song is. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah. I guess that depends on what mood we're going for. Oh, no, my. Well, I think we're a frontline uh, squad, right? So we have a bit of a rock beat in between, at least. It's got to be like Black Lagoon style music. Ooh, yeah. Just like kick ass rock music. Hey, Pocket, welcome back. Yeah, but. Um... Yeah, oh, no. no. Fair. Oh. oh no! no! I won't see that in an Oscar in memoriam. Big C S. <laughs> Wait. Talk now. Oh. Hello. Nope. Now they're muted. I can't hear you. <clears throat> oh. Wait. Did everybody crash, or was it just me? It was, it was just, just you. you. Okay. Yeah. But you're back. But anyway, Welcome back. 
Th yes, welcome back. And uh, but pincers go down into shields, block missiles, then pulses start uh, being shot through the pincers, which uh, demolish the street under her. And uh, that pure anime earth chalk waves shooting the bricks at the mech that's firing at her. Hell yeah. Jesus. Um, all right. Who else has an idea of like what we see of their character in the in this anime opening? Uh, I think it's a cut then to um, a, a Cubica standing in a room uh, with a mirror. Uh, and like uh, she, she's wearing like what the outfit she's got in the picture I have in the character keeper with these like layered, it, lots of layers of different colors. But she's adjusting uh, her camo device to try out different color schemes. Uh, and then uh, she uh, actually fades to invisible, uh, and then it. And the whole scene fades to a battlefield scene where her mech fades in uh, suddenly and stabs like a random uh, enemy mech uh, in uh, in the back uh, with you know a, a beam knife <laughs> and then disappears again. I'd, I'd be cross at a beam knife, but. Uh... I don't know if you weren't. I don't know if you were there for that beam saber game, Alex, where uh, Kyle pulled out a beam halberd. I was there for the last session of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I you weren't think. there when he pulled out the beam halberd. I, I, I don't think so. Uh, maybe uh, I don't remember. Yeah, beam knives are perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, hmm. That's a long-term project. Uh, I work on, on that in between missions. Uh, <laughs> what a beam ballista. Jesus Christ. It has um, to backstab people with it. With an entire ballista. Okay, all right. Of course. Okay. So <laughs> what the... <Sure>. Hmm. <laughs> well. Okay, all right. All right. Either, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Lars. Okay. Um, we see... Uh, uh, at first, we see this character sitting there in a in a top, and then some camel pants just say, "Hey, I'm a soldier," and he's uh, working on some sort of big ass gun. And uh, as he's working on it, and there are several other soldiers around him, so we can see that he yeah, he's a soldier. Uh, he keeps glancing towards this little stool where there is a book on it and it's a, it's a book that says something like theory of power or something and he's glancing at it but uh, then like like he would like to read it right now but he has to take care of this this gun and then you can see some sort of explosions and people keep start running around and you see him going up to this this mech and you have a sort you have a brief theme song for this mech which is a very weird and alien thing going on and uh, just as he runs up to the mech the mech grabs for him and he gets into the mech and is, the mech is moving you know the way that spiders move that seems so unnatural and alien the mech is moving like that <laughs> oh we're gonna be seeing more of that mech in the yeah. Next few yeah. weeks. Cold. Yay. Okay, looking, looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> and finally, Callista, what do we see of you in the in this opening? It's a low camera shot. It's focused on the ground. You see an empty whiskey bottle just laying on its side. You hear some snoring and an alarm glows off. Some grumbling. You hear a crash and then see bits of a broken alarm clock fly into frame. And then you see feet. Just feet and shins. Just bare. And then you hear a very loud belch. 
it reverberates for a while. And you see the feet move like the person standing up from this cot that they've been on. And then the feet start to move unsteadily off frame. And then you hear a crash as that sounds like somebody fell into something and see a few objects fly back into frame. Glasses, case, sunglasses, maybe a lamp. Then the theme music kicks in. And it fades to Callista in her mech, trying to figure out what to do about this enemy who seems just completely secured in their position. And then you see a light bulb go on over her head. Not literally, but just that, that kind of widening eyes like, ah, I've got the solution to this problem. And she barrels through a building and just bum rushes the mech that would seem to be in a previously secured position, knocks it over, and just starts stomping on it. Hell yeah. Yeah, and I think we culminate on uh, once, yeah, the, the theme kicks in and it gets really racing. Yeah, you do the stomping thing and with the camera pans and there's, and there's, uh, Names, I'm afraid to forget the names. There's Cubica's mech stabbing with a beam knife, and then pa camera pans, and like you know, a bit at the end of an anime opening, it's just really fast, and everyone's rushing forward at something for some reason. Um, and we get to see uh, Lars's uh, uh, mech just gonna like, dicing and dancing through the anime next, and we culminate uh, like a shot of of oh, squamous Jesus of of Des's uh, gigantic scorpion and mech just like lining up a shot and it's shooting through and it's tearing tearing through like the, these mechs and like i think we kind of end with like these four mechs looking up at this like beam of light in the middle of the city where the trebuchet uh engine is and then it does that thing where it all looks painterly whatnot and the music ends and then we get like a, oh beam saber was produced by austin ramsey of not of Austin Ramsey Games. You can find him at itch.io. Um, anyway, so that's our anime opening. Um, and I think, yeah, uh, I'm just going to pump you. I'm going to dump you all straight into a mission briefing because I'm looking at the time. We've got time, but like, I'd like to, like, for you all to experience at least one mission. And then we do downtime and we do free play and whatnot. So we get a feel for what the action is. Um, see how we all perform in the field. So, yeah, I think. We're just gonna open with like the four of you in your brief pulled into your briefing room at the opera house. Where are y'all briefed in the, in the opera house uh, uh, base? You think? Front row seats. <laughs> yep, by the orchestra pit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the orchestra lectern has been turned around to be looking at you uh, at the seats. And it's Baron August Friedland. Now, which I tried this out there back in I, where each of you is going to give, each of you players are going to give me one detail about this character, and we're going to try to smoosh it all together. Um, whether it's a physical or a social or a personality detail. Um, yeah, so what's our, what's our Baroness like? She has a very high voice, like fluty and girlish almost. She tries to make up for that um, in a way that she speaks a very militaristic jargon. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, you can tell from the jargon, this is somebody who has never been in combat. Like, not even hand-to-hand -hand training of any sort. Like, this is somebody who has never has so much as broken a fingernail in any sort of altercation. Their armor is very pretty, but anyone who's been in combat can immediately tell it's repurposed parade armor. Is it like uh, <laughs> I'm reminded of like a episode of Game of Thrones, the the Battle of Blackwater one, where Cersei Lannister had this like nice dress in this completely useless armor. <laughs> uh, it's just like. That doesn't make any sense. 
You, all, you, all you're gonna sit there. All you're gonna do is drink and mope uh, there. Repurposed. Uh, she always has to have something in like one of her hands, not necessarily to fidget with, uh, but just to be like carrying something or like a glass or anything. Uh, if she, her hands are like both her hands are empty, she doesn't know what to do with them. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's being mentioned. Baton. That was the actor I was going for. She absolutely has a conductor's baton with her. She's kind of like holding it behind her hand. She's tapping it uh, against her gloves. Um, she looks, let's see. Say she looks excited in a sense of like she's about to tour some palace and decide which one she likes best. Uh, that kind of excited. And she says like, uh, let's see. I mean, actually, let me. I need to look at my briefing <laughs> just to show exactly what the mission is because I wrote this in a in a very last minute. Give me a second. Clear. Sorry, give me a second. I need to write out some stuff. Try get there. <clears throat> um. Oh, actually, before we get into that, what the what's each character's demeanor? What are they like as they're sitting on these opera seats? About to hear another briefing from the Baroness. Um, uh, Yaren is not sitting. He's standing. He he's not comfortable sitting in those plushy seats. That that doesn't feel right to him. He's standing like at attention, kinda, or at ease with the hands, uh, like um, at his back, and looking at the Baroness with bored attention. Des definitely has like this uh, get like this uh, signature uh, iPad like device to take notes on to make sure that she, even if she doesn't respect this person exactly, she's going to take down everything verbatim. <laughs> uh, Cubica is sitting like very uh sitting but she's sitting very like formally and uh has arms crossed uh she's wearing mirrored sunglasses so like you can never tell quite where she, her gaze is at uh and she's got a bright yellow blazer with a white vest underneath <laughs> of course Two rows back, slumped in the seat, sprawled over the adjacent chairs, just wearing an olive drab tank and some fatigues, looking completely indifferent, probably partially sober. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Baroness kind of like, she's tapping, she's stringing this out for a bit she hasn't said anything as you all filed in so she's like tap, just tapping the conductor's baton and finally as if there's some cue she taps uh the baton on her back on her hand the rapid three times rapid succession and kind of like these like projectors in the orchestra pit can like project this map of the city of uh, magnum city as you see in the as you see in the uh in the character keeper and she says, like, soldiers, we've received intelligence that a major exalted man mandate attack is about to commence upon our territory over here. And she 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 kind of flicks the baton at the you see in the map. Hold on, I'm gonna screen share this so folks can see this. Um, oh no, things are free. That's, ah, my hubris. I said I was. Because she screen share something and my there we go. Uh yeah. She directs towards here. This like small and you notice like these are like farmlands. Oh, I, I'm little, sorry. Like, gray. I, I cannot see anything on the screen share because you apparently have connectivity issues. That's at least that's what, what? my screen tells me. That's what my screen no, tells me. I'm same sorry. here. Exactly. Ah, 
<laughs> hubris. There we go. I'm just going to stop. I'll just say, well, people who are watching this won't be able to see it then. Um, I need to look at my budget stream stuff. Anyway, yeah, you can see in between the uh, the, autoc the monarchy territory and the mandate territory, and the theocracy territory, there is like all this like farmland and this like small black dot uh, just right in the middle of the two. And which two colored borders are we looking at? Oh, the red and the purple. Mm -hmm. And the red ah. is what? Oh. Is the red's us? The red is, the red is yours, yeah. You are kind of at the edge of mm -hmm. the city. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining the upper house is next to, uh, you see that band of like gray? Uh, that a river um uh -huh. imagining yeah. the opera house is at near the next to that river but yeah you're in the red territory yeah you barely have a toehold in magnum city um the other four <laughs> factions kind of got that in lock but yeah the baroness points towards the small uh black dot in between the red and purple and she and she's like we receive intelligence from the eyes of ymir that this farming uh this farming community has been turned into a radar installation for the exalted exalted mandate and they are to use it as a forward operating base leading to an attack into our rear guard your objective for this mission soldiers is to is to launch a preemptive strike on their forces before they could do to before they could launch their strike on us. Simple enough, right? Do you have access to whom is guarding this forward operating base? Hmm. Um, here's where we roll some dice. Um, <laughs> don't worry. Uh, yeah, yeah, dice rolling. Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some dice rolling in, involved in this game. Uh, I'm gonna pop the pop the roll for a party in the yeah yeah there there, are, there aren't any roll twenty sheets yet for beam saber and I'm told they'll probably be done in the next month or so but for now we'll stick with Google sheets um yeah think this is gonna be like a fortune roll what that means is there's no risk so there's no like um there's no the position and effect doesn't matter we're just gonna roll to see what kind of information you get. Uh, oh, what kind of information you might have on hand. So you ask this, and I think, hmm, I think I'm going to have you roll to see how good the intelligence is, um, if that's okay with you, uh, Des. That's fine. Um, okay. I'm going to have you. Normally, I'd roll this because I'm GM, but uh, I want I want. I, I want to disclaim, Roy. Just let, leave that to you. Um, so you're going to roll the tier of the intelligence agency that has this intelligence. That's tier three. So you can roll three dice. So roll me 3d6. Well, I got at least one six. Hell yeah. You get great detail and follow-up questions are are on hand i think she smile uh baroness smiles at your question at your question and she taps another she does another like delicate tap with a conductor's baton and like an image a, a a video file actually starts playing on the holographic display and uh you can see that like this farming community there's like um there's like what four Pokey wooden buildings and this big sort of warehouse where you where you know like I don't know cows get milked in a in a fashion most industrial um, fashion most I don't know why I said it like that um, uh, you can see like there's like a few there's like exalted mandate mechs which ooh what kind of style of mechs do you think they have uh, I like bird kind of mechs. I like yeah. wings at least, like it's very angelic or uh, bird like. Like probably no bat wings or anything like that. Probably all white and gold. Lots. Oh of yeah, lots of, lots of lots of unnecessary just... ornamentation. Yeah. Yeah. Pastels at the very least, if there's going to be colors. 
and yeah. everything and glittering metals like, like gold and and silver ornamentations. And um, <laughs> I think probably like protective runes or sigils from the religion inscribed in like these precious metals on the mechs. So I imagine that they have a soundtrack when they come like a uplifting organ thing that wafts over the enemy forces like a choir. It's a choir. Yeah. In fact, I think even like there's music pipes in the video. You can hear like you, they've taken over the farm's loudspeaker system. You can hear just like yeah, uh, Pachelbel's cannon uh, playing or something like that. <laughs> something like equivalent. Um, Playing through the farm, and I think it takes a long camera shot, and you can see like it's a fairly sizable unit they've got there. There's like um, there's they've got like five grunt mechs, um, kind of like a patrolling around the installation. You can see like there's like two like worker mechs on top of the big warehouse, and they're installed there. They've got like radar dishes on them. You can, you know, they're providing the radar stuff. Stuff, and then the camera like kind of turns to the left, and this big white bipedal mech kind of like lurches from around, um, around from the other side of the warehouse, uh, lurching into view. And it's got these two round discs that are almost kind of like wings, except they're floating off them. Um, and uh, Des, you recognize. This mech as device god. Oh, okay. yeah. I think uh, Des was calmly taking notes, and then uh, at least Kubrick can, because uh, she's sitting down next to me, can see like my finger just start pressing into the pad. Like if it could go through, it would. Yeah, and I think uh, Baroness starts rattling off some some jargon and info about the winners, as if like y'all haven't. Or at least, as if they're new to you, it's like, oh yes, uh, we do. I just do believe that the winners, a squad from the Exalted Mandate, are taking control of this radar installation, and it's a lot of like kind of banal facts about, oh, we think that they're, we think this is what their their strength is. We think this is why they're doing that. This, is, I think, I think this is who their squad members are. Um, you said that uh, but, I get okay. a question, right, with that six? Yeah, yeah. You have a follow-up question. Uh, um, what would be the uh, best route to basically destroy the land around this to, like, impede the other mechs, the winners? Ooh. As in, you want to wreck the terrain? Question. Hmm? I perk up at this question because that's actually my, that's kind of my thing. Yeah. Basically I want to know how to like, uh, mm -hmm. we'd be building impromptu, uh, like ditches and, uh, barriers pretty much. <clears throat> uh, I think, uh, Baroness looks perturbed at that and she starts like tapping around the map and she pokes around to like around the north is like where they're like um the, i'm imagining the farm here is like because it's sci-fi future a lot of it's like automated like uh, it's it's fed automatically to like some sort of sprinkler system or some sort of water filtration system uh there is like a system up at the north of the farm where if you knock it out and like you can flood um the west the, the east side so you can cut off the farm from the rest of the mandate's territory and i think she kind of says that hesitantly as if like she she doesn't know what farming is but she's reading it off like oh yeah i, I guess i guess yes yes you can totally do that but she doesn't say that like of course you, you if you can accomplish this operation that way i'm sure i'm sure it would go smoothly um and she's a bit so more hesitant with her words at that. <sighs> well, so long as you drive off the winners from the installation, um, your main objective is to uh, take out their, their, the base that they're building there. 
If you can take the installation intact, well, that would be a bonus. Uh, that would be a boon to our cause. And that would certainly serve us better in the future. That would require us to defeat the winnerers in open combat. And I don't believe that's going to happen. If we can take out those radars, we can sneak in, blow up the base, sneak out, get out, be done. I think she kind of like gives you a smile. It's like, well, well, I leave that up to you, squad. You're, you're the ones out in the front line after all. And she like, I think she'll leave the map up so you can like plot or plan or whatever. Um, anyone else have anything to say to the Baroness? Because it looks like she's gonna leave you all to like just figure this out for yourselves. I probably have like just some kind of. Not passive aggressive moment, but uh, oh no, problem now. Oh, uh, I thought you went you went gray for a second, but uh, like just, just some of that that noble bullshit of you know may you be well or may you uh like whatever like the equ the equivalent of may you have a nice day is for nobles. I got <laughs> I got one more question. You said a bonus. Yes. What kind of bonus are we talking about? Well, um, <clears throat> hold on, I'm trying to figure out how she'd phrase this. I mean, there's a uh, mechanic way I know and a hard way to do this. And if we do it the hard way, I want to know what we can expect in compensation because the easy way is just blow everything to hell and walk out. But you're saying there's a hard way to do it and that we'll be rewarded. So. Well, well, we do reward hard work from those who fight for the kingdom of Ymir. Um, it's not what it's not a hundred thousand karma points. Shush. Ah, uh, Yaran looks a bit um, uh, a bit unbelieving at that. Like, what do you do? Okay. I mean, you're you're still not giving us anything concrete here. You're giving us these little vague promises of a reward. I mean, you want us to go out there and take this thing intact. I want to know exactly what we can expect in return. I think uh, she kind of sighs and starts like looking. She has like, she looks up at her glove and suddenly you can see like, oh, it's some sort of nanotech glove and it pops on like a small hologram for, uh, hologram screen for herself and she starts like flicking through like, okay, all right, hold on. Um, well, I could try and I could convince the, let's just say that if, if such hard work is performed, then the requisitions office would look more kindly upon you and release more materiel for your usage. Uh, mechanically, what this means is just like, every time you accomplish a mission, you get like a reward uh, specifically from your faction. Uh, let me look up what the autocracy gives you. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Where is it? Give me a second. Scroll development. Uh, a reward. There we go. Um, the autocracy gives you one plus material and one plus trust with the employer. Uh, what she's basically saying is like she'll double that if you. Mechanically, what happens is that you'll, you'll, that you'll double your reward if you do the secondary objective. She'll say, like, the, the King of Ymir looks kindly upon those who would work hard for its perseverance, and they want to ensure that you keep working hard. Sounds great. We'll get to it. I belch. I think she actually says that as she leaves. Oh, go ahead. I'm already studying the map. I'm done with her. <laughs> I think uh, but while she leaves, you, you see her like, like shut her bits like, oh, I kind of have to deal with those yahoos. Um, <laughs> all right. So you've got some time before the mission to like do a bit of just a bit more research gathering information um unless you think you have enough info and we can just do a plan and do engagement i mean yaren and i are both skilled at wrecking things so 
we can wreck it in just the right way that we get to keep the installation and cut them off from their territory. Sure. And right, we have an officer who's doing more research research. all this. So I mean, we can just flood them and wash them out, literally. You're a tactical genius, Desdemona. What do our odds look like to you as far as taking on the winnowers? In a direct combat, not good. If we even the playing field by making it so that their mechs can't touch the ground easily by flooding the playing field, we'll do much better. Our mechs, besides my own, can function in water much better. Yours has better grappling with its feet. Yarin's has those pointed rods that move it about. And, well, Callista's is heavy enough that nothing's going to stop it from moving. I'm an immovable object, bitch. Congratulations. I hope you are immovable, though. At but least if, a little. But if we can get them into uh, the field with Yarin and Callista, you and I could take on the building itself. This way we could try and keep the building by t and take out the, the satellites themselves and re render it... Okay, okay. We'll definitely need a distraction of some sort. Instead uh, of taking out the satellites, can we hack them? Can we take control of them? I would rather them not be able to get off any signal for help before we take the base. All right. Uh, before we get to bog down the planning, we don't need to do all that. Um, the planning. <laughs> that always uh, happens. <laughs> it always happens. I know, but like that's what that's what flashbacks are for. We can just yeah. cut back. To like yeah, we planned all this. But basically, I want uh, Yaren and Callista to go wreck the field uh, and be the distraction of getting out all the mechs. While uh, yeah, sure. Let the non let the peasant grunts uh, draw all the flag. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we wouldn't want you to inadvertently tear a stitch in your precious clothes. Well, I'm sure you could sew them back up just wonderfully. No, I couldn't. It'd be ugly as hell. You'd be able to tell that I did the stitching. It'd work. It'd be in one piece, but it'd be ugly as fuck. Listen. We all have our best benefits in this mission. I'm not separating people out of whatever you grew up with. This is based on potential and skill set. Right. I'm going to need a bottle and a half of whiskey to do this. Trust me. I wish I would be the one initiating combat with the Vice God. That bitch needs to be taken down and taken down hard. I'm just telling you what I need to actually like do this. Like I literally. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I think we're at the point where we can start uh, initiating the plan. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you're all, uh, you're all. Oh my god, the social lubrication has happened. I can't wait for a downtime, y'all. I'll be forced to interact with each other. Um, that, that's how you clear vice in this game. You're forced to interact with at least one of each other. Um, yeah, cut loose is great. All right, uh, what was I looking for? Um, all right, what was I looking for? Uh, I need to look up one more thing. Sorry, that's what I forgot to do. The rules of engagement. There we go. Okay, so okay. one last all question. Right. So, we are got... there any non-combatants okay. in the in this in the area of operations we need to worry about? I was about to uh, figure that out. Um, I think, I think I'll, I'll just give this for free. I think um, you'd assume that the exalted mandate, or at least the, the exalted mandate, would have moved all the civilians out of the farm. However, these are the winnowers they sent, so who knows? You might have to <laughs> dig a little bit deeper for that, but assume for a moment that they've taken control of a civilian um, installation. Angry cows. Uh, <laughs> If there are any civilian deaths, the kingdom can credibly blame the exalted mandate for uh, 
not clearing them out effectively. Still, um, there are there are rules of engagement for this mission. Uh, rules of engagement are restrictions that the your faction has put on you. If you break those, you lose trust with them. And they get mad at you. I want that. Uh, for this mission, uh, I'll just run down again what the mission is. Yeah, um, your objective is to take out the radar installation. Um, it's being crewed on this farm between your territory and, and the exalted mandates. Secondary objective is to take the installation intact, where it means driving away the winnowers um, or cutting them off from the place, whatever it means necessary. Um, there are rules of engagement, um, threatening or employing force against civilians. Kingdom of Ymir is welcomes all. That, that's what they. That's what they say. Um, also escalation of force the squad should never be the one to increase the deadliness of conflict this is technically a preemptive attack intelligence from your the intelligence from your agency says they're planning to attack and you're just getting the drop on them um but you're not the ones increase that you you have a job to do you don't need to escalate it into something bigger like you just do your job don't need to like chase them down towards mandate territory I think those are the two main uh, rules of engagement. No threatening or employing force on civilians and no escalation of the conflict. Okay. But what if we take extra territory? <laughs> Is that escalation? <laughs> yes. It might be overlooked if we take extra territory. They probably won't chastise us. Probably. You know, I like that. They probably maybe won't chastise us. I'm good with probably maybe. Yeah. You know what? I'm pretty sure one of the two of us gets demoted and one of the two of them gets promoted. That's how it works. <laughs> of course. A Russian oh, so cynical. Gets demotion. <laughs> All right. I didn't uh, I didn't get that. Sorry. What was that? Oh, rock, paper, scissors, Rochambeau. We'll figure out who gets demoted that way. All right. So let's choose the tactic. The tactic is the method the squad is going to use to accomplish the objective. This is a general strategy and requires a detail that explains how the mission opens. So this is like the plans for, uh, for play, 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 folks who played Forge and Dark. There's assault. It's open violence against the target. The detail is the point of attack. Deception, luring, tricking, and manipulating the target. The detail is the method of deception. There's scientific, engaging with technological power. The detail is the unusual procedures. Uh, social is when the squad negotiates, bargains with, or persuades the target. That's not going to happen. Uh, stealth is for taking action undetected. The detail is the point of infiltration. And transport is carrying cargo and people through danger. The details, the route, and the means. Which tactic do you think this mission is? It's deception, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're the distraction. The other are infiltrating the whole thing. It sounds like this, like oh. deception. Hell yeah. Um, all right. Next, you pick your loadout. Loadout is the amount of gear that each pilot is bringing on the mission. So each pilot, where um, if you're carrying light. Um, he oh, hold on. Light, medium, or heavy. Um, uh, yeah, th this is for your pilots. Um, who is it? You're clicking stuff. It's underneath uh, the rivals and allies. Um, for anyone who can't find it, there we go. Mech load is yeah. like fixed until like the, you do a special thing to change it, right? Vehicle load. Yes. Yes. Uh, vehicle load is. Fix and then you have to do and when you declare gear for the vehicles, you need you need to spend some stuff to change them because you know they're they're mechs. You can't just easily change what they. Have. So yeah, well, declare your vehicle load. Is, okay, fine. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, vehicle load is underneath the uh, vehicle action ratings. There we go. Let's see you I noticed that uh, Lars put a lot of action ratings in their vehicle uh, actions. Yeah. Um, tell me again. Uh, sorry, I was uh, too too. I was too busy reading about my gear to understand what was the consequence if I loaded up heavily on uh, Mac gear. 
Um, well, no, well, the consequence is just that you're 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 definitely going to be more versatile. It's just that you're going to be very obviously loaded for combat. Yes, Absolutely. you'll be a bit heavier, even though your your mech is weird. And yeah, um, I think I like I like being going in heavy because we're the distraction, right? I can I there is no reason for me to be subtle about whatever I'm doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, okay. I think once everyone's picked a load, we do the engagement roll. Um, hmm, I have another. Despite I, my I calculations, have, we probably. Won't. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Because I have figured out that I have only five things I can load, so I can go with with normal, right? Because I can't go above five anyway. Oh no no! no. Uh, those are let's see one two three four. Wait, which those five? Are, um, those are five. Oh yeah, no. There's also you see standard items. If you look through the drops on it, you can load I any see. one of those. Ooh, cool. Okay. Very Is good. there anything you like a load of flame that good that you can carry along with you? Um, let me see. There should be a flamethrower. Yeah, in standard items. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay. What? Okay. Um, let's see. I think um, your bandolier. Destruction. I'm gonna say your bandolier would count. Probably. You don't have to check off those items now. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, fuck it. You, you declare them as well. You, you declare them in the middle of play. So, so you don't have to pick out what you have at the moment. You don't have to pick it up from before the mission. Oh, I can just say I have it now that I'm using it, and then check it off. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're declaring how much you're carrying, basically. Okay. Cool. All right. After engagement roll. Now, I don't foresee us finishing this mission unless y'all do incredibly well. Then again, there's a rival in play, so we'll just play along and see where we end up. Um, engagement roll. Let's build the dice. You're gonna start with one for sheer luck. One die. This will determine your position once the action starts. And we go through some questions. Is the mission bold? Sure. I'd say so. I'd say so. Yes. Yeah. We're I taking on a tier three right spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, is the mission complex? Not really, oh, no. Yeah. No. Nah. Flood the field, cool. shoot the bad guys, take the towers. Yeah, pretty much. Does the mission exploit the target's vulnerabilities? I think so. I'm trying to yep. exploit their mechs versus ours. Especially with the flooding. Yeah. Hell yeah. T plus 1D. Is the mission's tactic ineffective against the target? I don't think so. Sounds very effective. Yeah. Does the squad receive external support for the mission? I don't think so. I think you're all on your own <laughs> for this. Oh, we can't bring our, our thugs with us? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, that well, I say external support outside of your your squad. Your thugs are part of your squad, technically okay. your cohort. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. You can totally bring them along. Sure. Um, is anyone interfering with the mission other than the target? No. This is like a straight up bare knuckle brawl against the two of you. It's gonna be fine. Um, are there other factors? Um, let's see. I'm gonna take a w actually. No, I think you're fine. I think we're fine with three dice. Three dice is good. Who wants so to roll three dice? Dice already. So should I just roll? I mean, you are the officer. Okay. Let's re-roll this. Got a six. Hey, so you're gonna start in a controlled position. That's damn good. Um. All right. I just to be indulgent because this is the first time. I think here's what we're gonna do. Um, I think we're not. I'm not gonna play out to the very end of the time we have allotted, because I wanna give some breathing room uh, to that job. Um, so what we're we're gonna end it. We're. I'm gonna. I want each of you to describe your mechs as you kind of launched, as you launch off, head off towards this fight, um, and then I'm gonna set the scene as to where y'all end up, which is gonna be a very good position. So let's go left to right in the character keeper. Sorry, I did promise mechs at some point in this session. Uh, description of them. Um, 
All right. To start with Dez, what does it look like when you launch your Mac? And what is your Mac? I think uh, Dez uh, like goes up to her Mac. It uh, releases this small little uh, copper needle. She has to prick her finger, and like it only allows her blood, her literal blood and uh, DNA to get in this Mac. Otherwise, it is useless. That is the noble way. And once she is uh, checked in, she uh, straps in, gets this elaborate uh, st style of uh, straps just so she can't uh, be sh uh, shaken around when she starts destroying shit in this mech and uh, starts uh, setting up the systems. I think she's uh, ambidextrous and just typing away like she's... Like, if she had, if she was in Ghost in the Shell, her fingers would have exploded into those uh, wires. She could uh, super type, and uh, the mech begins walking forward, the tail slinging around, and uh, the uh, the uh, banners or uh, whatever that are attached to this mech begin uh, waving in the wind as soon as it uh, hits the outside air. Can you tell us the name of your mech, actually? So, um... okay. Let me uh, make sure, because my mech is the Authority Crown. <laughs> it is an Empress Herald custom mech that looks like a uh, very noble scorpion. It's got a regal bearing. It's royal red as well. <laughs> All right. We turn to... I guess we should move to call signs and we're going to the mission. So we got Queen, now to Vogue. Uh, yes, uh, Vogue's mech is the Silhouette. It is a prototype stealth mech of the Sepiida model. Um, it had uh, it's human. It's a small on the smaller size. It's humanoid. Has six arms. Uh, that. Uh, sort of all unfold. Uh, they're like all crossed and then they all unfold once uh, the mech activates um, very gracefully. Uh, then uh, there's a brief... It uh, You see it's uh, like the colors on its surface, the patterns on its surface changing and it's like very, it's very visible. It's just testing basically to uh, make sure everything is in order. Um, it's called this, it's a Sepiida model because it has that ability, like cuttlefish, uh, have um, to, you know, change the patterns on their skin to an incredible, like, to a high level of detail. Uh, that's the optical camo, I'm thinking. Uh, and then um, it just kind of uh, jumps and uh, launches into the air very quietly. Um, and disappears above the clouds. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the last thing you'll never see. Um, dancer. Jeez, that's a, that is a call sign and a half. Yeah. Two. Yeah, well. Um, the answer goes up to Filigree, which is uh, his mech. Uh, the mech is uh, this, it's called the Ciro 27 Alspa. There are some of the Ciro's around. They're pretty ancient and nobody really knows where they're, where they came from. But they, the, the thing about these things is they, they choose their pilot. That's not something you can force, really. And uh, that uh, that's the you see um, dancer walk up to the mech, and the mech bends a hand down, and he gives uh, the mech the hand, and then um, some sort of kind of needle or something comes out of the mecha um, mecha hand and injects itself into his arm, and there the connection stays, and some um, some filaments come out of the arm and twist around him and lift him up to the to the cockpit, which is on the top, and then he gets kind of spun into the cockpit, like um, the mech mech is growing around him, the cockpit is growing around him, 
and then it kind of starts stretching or something looks making some of these weird movements and then it goes off um probably an all fours for that one okay. <laughs> and it kind of looks like okay. you know these people who get uh, the, these gymnasts who go over the top and then walk on their hands and their feet and yeah, it looks like that a bit okay okay, okay. all right okay um last but not least we turn to um shell shock I climb up the scaffolding that surrounds my mech because I don't have any of this fancy shit. I got to climb into my mech like an actual pilot. And I get up to the cockpit, swing around, strap into the seat, hit the button, cockpit closes. A few months later, the cockpit opens again. I kick about half a dozen empty whiskey bottles out of it, curse, close the cockpit again. You hear the spin, you hear the engine spinning up. It goes from a high pitched kind of whine to a more throaty rumble. And then it just starts stomping off. It, this is this is not subtle. Brick is brick is not a subtle mech. There is nothing subtle at all about brick. And you just hear the th constant thud 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 every time brick takes a step god so nothing stealthy about that <laughs> um all right so remind me who, who are the that are on um distraction duty yarn and i oh yeah and the other two are like uh take off take uh the radar installation duty um yeah. Uh, Cubica and Des. All right. So I think it's simple enough. I think it's night, but it's a beautiful night night sky. It's like there's like this this. I'm thinking like there's this. Ah, screw it. Two moons. Why not? It's it's well. I say two moons. Uh, but like yes, I think you can see like two moons. Just like. That's why the the lunar landscape on in this place is ridiculous. Uh, the, the night is almost as bright as day, but it's still dark, and there's like lights out everywhere. Um, even though like the trebuchet is still running, it should be there should, should be so much light pollution. You can still see the stars um, through the clouds. Um, and yeah, it's just gazing as these two moons are looking down on you. I think. I think the opening operation is just clockwork. I think you know what? because it's so because it's a six. I'll just let you narrate the. No, no I'm kidding. No, this is my job. Um, so, Yarn and Callista, um, Dancer and Shellshock, your distraction is to take out the. You're 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 the ones in flood duty on flood duty, right? Yep. And honestly, just to make sure it's a good distraction. I don't want to do it very subtly. I mean, Brick's not subtle. I think I just want to fire my weapons at it and make some noise to draw some attention. Yeah, you draw know, attention is what we were there for. Well, and, you know, Dancer can go stealth. No. I can't. But Dancer no. can be stealthy around me and, like, take out opposing mechs. Oh, that's a good idea. But I don't know if the RN is all that good with the whole stealthy stuff. I think what they... what what pocket means is like brick is so big they're a big yeah. target but they'll be focusing yeah. on brick yeah yeah that's on that's you. that's cool i can dance around that yes sure yeah so i think yes that's what we that's what we kind of see uh this episode uh um actually no you, you got a chance to describe you and i think um actually no i'll narrate this and then I'll, i will we'll have one last image from cubica and des so i think yeah brick just unloads uh at the irrigation system just a few you're, you're in like you are in bright view of the farm uh, of the radar installation and i think you can see like the dishes on the two mechs on top of the warehouse where the 
where the I don't know, the industrial milking is happening kind of like you see the radars kind of like swivel and you can see like the radars are like these like weird rectangular like glass sort of paneling and it kind of like starts reflecting around you and you just hear klaxons the this whole galactic empire starts kind of like throwing and like you see um the fight i think you because your distraction is so good you draw out like pretty much i think the entirety of the grunt mechs i said i said five so like these four uh eight this five angel mechs can say power up and when they power up they brighten they stand out they're not subtle either um for sure and that makes them I a good think... target <laughs> exactly they didn't really think of that about that or they probably should have uh no the exalted mandate is meant to inspire they're not meant to hide away their light is meant to show to everyone um and i think i think those five mechs will take flight and we'll head toward well some i think two of them will take flight and three will just kind of like start stomping towards you and i think they start unsheeting their their beam weapons and the two uh flight probably have like big silly looking ornamental guns or like giant flint blocks um cradled in two arms and i think and i think yeah uh i'll cut to i think there's still a bit of distance between brick and that brick and dancer and the other and the mechs coming in um what's what's queen and vogue's approach look like there's in cubica i think uh like it and correct me at any time uh alex if i say something that you wouldn't be uh, or that if Vogue would take action, but I think like, the light is just very bright from these uh, mechs powering up, and there's like the, uh, at least in me one mech with the radar on his back staying behind as these lights just keep moving away. And then in the darkness, there's like this ruby red shimmer, and the radar starts turning, and this beam of uh, energy just fires from a authority crown and takes it starts uh, striking at the radar dish yeah i think and i think um at the same time uh the silhouette would be descending uh from above uh it has a light mobility suite uh which can include a flight system so i guess i'm declaring that uh and I might as well declare my optical camo too. It's cool. I got frontline rigging. Um, yeah, descends uh, from above, uh, goes into stealth cut camo mode, uh, and lands uh, lightly. Uh, how how like in how inside the base are is the authority crown? The authority crown's outside. I think okay. like. There were two mechs with the radars on it. I think we were both taking out a separate radar mech. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I forgot there were two. Uh, yeah. the the So it's not activating optical camo yet, uh, but it is descending from above uh, and just um, I mean, I guess it's hey. like it just rips the head off this thing, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, I, I thought we we're gonna, you know, we might be able to finish this mission one go. Who knows? You're in a control position. Let's do some rolls. Let's let's see if this works. I'm suddenly really excited. I just heard a lot of cool mechs and mech action, uh, mech on mech assault, uh, mech on mech action. I don't know what I'm babbling about. Let's 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 yeah, we got some time. Let's do this. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, with with Queen with the Authority Crown. Um. You're, this is an action roll. What are you rolling? Uh, I am you get to pick what the action is. Hell yeah. Um, oh, I will ask you to declare a weapon. Um, My small armory. Your, like, I'm... <laughs> Jeez. You have a small arm. What? Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Check that. Um, is there a controlled position? Um, they didn't know 
they're distracted right now thanks to brick i think this is controlled great okay yeah uh do you want to oh here's something i learned about beam saber normally in blades in the dark you can choose to either push yourself or take a devil's bargain here it's called the collateral die in beam saber you can do both Ooh, i am just going to push myself all right so there's a difference when you're pushing the mech instead of using stress you use up a quirk um or one of your mech quirks which one do you think is the one you're pushing I think I'm uh, pushing my tireless gyros by uh, forcing them to uh, like uh, stay, like really dig into the earth and uh, lock me in place while I fire this amazing blast. Yeah, yeah. I think I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but fuck it. I I, I want to see this happen. This is gonna piggyback as a setup action. If you, this goes well, the effect of Alex's of uh, Vogue's attack is gonna go up. Okay. I'm gonna be nice. So, all right. So that's three D six controlled. Great. I got a six. Oh my god! Yeah. So, what does it look like when you bombard the shit out of this radar mech? I think this is just like, um, like I think the radar mech is just turning, and like the radar doesn't get time to pick up the energy signal. Like the radar just turns and is taken over by this wash of ruby red that energy that just sweeps over it. And uh, once the energy uh, flies by, the light uh, dims down, and, like the, le the last few pieces of this mech just begin falling off the roof. Hell yeah. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm going to jump back to the distraction crew. Um, um, so Brick is firing on, on the on the irrigation uh facility these five mechs two three of them are on the ground two of them are on the air are making towards their way yeah i think so, um, i maybe i should take out the irrigation system because i'm better at destroying stuff than brick is maybe i don't know how are you uh destroy you don't have any dots and destroy i do have two so yeah ah I'm better the thing is wreck is the skill that we're supposed to be using oh uh, yeah no wreck no a pilot. Uh, if you're in your mech, okay, you use your mech for action ratings. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, so Sabine is right. Uh, okay. she, her, her mech has destroy. Yeah, and also right. I'm, I'm gonna choose a heavy cannon, I think, to have okay. with me because I mean, you know that you need that to destroy stuff, right? Okay. So it does helps. it? So what it looks like is. You're forming the cannon and bricks maybe turning around to do battle with the angel mix. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. What is your, your mech so thin. Where, where do you have a cannon on it? What does it look like? <laughs> it It's a heavy cannon. That means the effect is heavy. It doesn't have to be a heavy thing. Right. Um, it is actually, uh, I think it comes from these weird shoulder blades where you can see this little star. And when that lights up, then uh, there are two huge beams of light just shooting out and uh, destroying the installation stuff. If the roll goes well, at least. All right. So I think, let's see, you're rolling with destroy, heavy cannon. It's also, mm -hmm. you're still in a control position because you all rolled the six in an engagement. That's yeah. controlled. Great. Do you want to push yourself? Sure. Take a collateral die? Okay. No, I don't Absolutely. want to take a collateral die, but I will push myself. I offer you a, a different option. I could have, uh, you, since I have this as a plan, I could have foreseen your actions and just give you an extra die for free. Oh, cool! Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Oh yes, yeah, two times like, permission. Yeah, so I think like this is like a like a small flashback of just me watching the uh, mech use these uh, shearing mm -hmm. lasers mm -hmm. and uh, you know saying where to point it at the map. Yeah. Okay. I'll be using that. Then that means I'm rolling four dice, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're pushing yourself as well, right? Um, I am. Yes. Uh, uh, tell me which one of your quirks are you using? I am using, let me see. Quirk, quirk, quirk. Where are my quirks? I have to find my quirks. Sorry. I, I, will, I will use, I think, the, the fact that the... Uh, Ah, hmm. 
Yeah, there are bits. I, I use the too many edges because uh, that is what is going to come into play here because these edges, they will align themselves in front of the, the, the beam cannons and reflect them into the irrigation system and make, make that a lot more effective right. or maybe not, who knows? I will now just roll four dice and we'll see. Uh, yeah, controlled great. I rolled a oh. six. Hell yeah. So um, I, I put dice? a clock. I, I was going to say, even though I'm a big fan, I'm not going to let you destroy this irrigation facility with one shot. I put a clock yeah. in there. But you put a. a I'm sorry. But look, I, yeah. I'm a fan. I'm not that big of a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make things hard a bit. Um, so I. So, but it's a good sh it's a very good shot it's controlled great so it's gonna it's actually gonna it's gonna fill that clock in half uh wait yeah uh let's see one oh i put uh, the clocks are in the roll for a party um so irrigation facility i think yeah you fire off from your heavy cannon and like you just like punch a hole through like half of this like facility i'm imagining this like like uh it's um it's like a couple of small buildings and like some tankards of water and you punch a hole through the buildings and like you you seared off quite you you made like a big scorch mark on the tank um so you're nearly there you can see the pressure is right there and i think the effect of it as well it's just like oh shit um the 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 mechs are suddenly conflicted on whether to take on the big hulking brick or this weird fuck off Ava Mech that just produced a heavy cannon out of nowhere. Uh, I'm gonna cut back to our team. Um, <laughs> so Vogue, you got. I, I, I was too nice. I gave you. I, I made uh, Queen's action a uh, setup action, so you got extra effect. Your effects already probably really great, isn't it? Uh, I mean. I, I'm, I, I'll, I'm I'll, I'll certainly you. take the great effect. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm basically landing on this neck and stabbing it a bunch, I think. Uh, Going to declare a melee weapon or two. Um, so I imagine that's battle. Uh, I get mm -hmm. one die for attacking from hiding or springing a trap, and I think this qualifies. Hell yeah. Uh, and I would like to push myself by exhausting my many arms quirk. So I think it's basically like the, the sneaking up, uh, like coming in behind uh, this radar mech and essentially just stabbing it multiple times with like several arms simultaneously until like the pilot is very dead is the goal. <laughs> Yeah, um, this is good. You're still in a control position. Oh my god, um, controlled extreme. You're beyond great. If you do this, you're gonna achieve a dominating effect, which is just oh, that's oh a thing. God. Damn, okay. Oh, yeah, no, that is a thing. You should, you should listen. You're should listen to the latest kinds of stuff. It happened, it was amazing. I am anyway, so far um, behind, dude. I, uh, okay, okay, all right. Roll your treaty six control extreme. That's uh, I got a five. Could be worse. Yeah, five, five. No, could be worse. Okay, so here's what happens in a four to five. That's a mixed success, uh, but it's still extreme. Uh, let me look up some stuff. Okay, so what happens in a control success? There's actually a lot of consequences. Um, let me look at this list. What should I inflict on you? Um, and of course, you're you're free to resist all this. Uh, any consequence I could throw at you? Oh, okay. Here's what happens. So, because you still had extreme effect, you're gonna stab the shit out of this radar mech. Stab the heck out of it. it actually, yeah. I mean, you got your many arms, which apparently has a lot of beam knives. Um, uh, and I think, yeah, you're, you're going to destroy it. And they're like, okay, cool. It looks like you have control of the facility. But then I think you feel these two invisible pulses of energy just slam into your mech. Um, and I think 
uh, the consequence is going to be uh, level one damage uh, slammed because I can't think of anything right now. Um, and they're going to like just almost kind of like two different ends kind of like suddenly smash against you. Um, do you want to resist that? Yeah, I'm going to resist that. Uh, think. Okay. So, which, yeah. Oh, I get to Can pick I see? Which you, what you're resisting from. Oh, yeah. All oh, right. I, can I see like where this is coming from, though? Um, no. It's so it's okay. just two invisible pulses of energy okay. just about to hit you. So, to, to resist in a mech, you don't roll dice. Um, instead, you're going to exhaust quirks. Um, oh, but you exhaust one less quirk because of forged in fire, because that's your ability the squad gets. Uh, you're going to use your expertise. Let me see. Uh -huh. um, so the way you resist in the mech is you exhaust four quirks minus the number of ratings you have in that attribute. Okay. So you would exhaust. You would have exhausted two, but because you have that ability, you exhaust one quirk. Which one are you exhausting? Uh, I will exhaust light footed, uh, and it's basically yeah. like so how do you avoid? I, these? Yeah, I, I stab this thing a bunch, um, and then uh, like. I don't know if I feel uh, like something coming or what, uh, but I just jump right back up. Uh, just shoot right back up. Uh, yeah, and I think from your vantage point, you can see yeah. where you can see this mech kind of like shimmer and the cloak, and it's that one you saw in the footage, the big tall bipedal mech with the two floating discs, uh, almost serving like uh, as wings. Now, here's a fun thing with rivals. I've just put an eight step clock, so we're definitely gonna end on a cliffhanger tonight. Um, <laughs> I just want an eight step clock. It that's the default, they start at eight steps. That's what rivals are, they're ridiculous. Um, so the vice god has showed herself. And she's gonna inflict a consequence immediately. She sends out this like wave as to say, like, you all are now seen. This is what exalted mandate does, motherfuckers. They 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 shine their light and everyone's seen. So everyone is now in a risky position. So that's one consequence that they've inflicted. But I think since we're near close to time, let's turn to Brick. Because we've not seen them in action. Well, they shot at the Irrigation facility to do cross extraction, but you're not up against five mechs, brick, uh, uh, shell shock. Only five. <laughs> what do you do? How many of them are airborne? Two. Two. So there's three on the ground. Yeah. All right. So. The first thing, <laughs> um, Brick has a lot of weapons, like a lot, a lot. So there's two racks of missiles, and I'm going to unload them at the airborne mechs. All right. Okay. Um, and let's see. So I've got two okay. battle. I think they're close enough that you can tell if this can count as battle. They're getting close. Okay. This is part of the risky position. I think part of that energy pulse is suddenly those mechs feel a bit fast. Suddenly move a bit faster and they're getting close to you. But this is battle for sure. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how many dice I need to roll here. Okay, so you've got two so far. I'll say you. this is a risky standard roll. You're now in a risky position. Mm -hmm. Um... I put a clock for like just the entire, like just the entire that entire that entire squad, and mm -hmm. every success fills up that clock. Once you fill that up, you defeated the squad. Okay. Um, so you got two. You can push yourself. You can also take a collateral die, or someone and and someone can assist you. I will push myself. I will take a collateral die, and can I tag in a quirk? Um, yes. That, pushing yourself is spending one quirk. That is, that is okay. Is. If you're if because, since while you're in the mech. Okay. Uh, assisting. Um, do I have to uh, uh, expand a quirk to assist? No, assisting a fellow player is always stress. Oh, okay, that's fine then. Then I would like to assist if that's okay with you. Oh. 
All right, so I have to yeah. check off. Are you quirk, correct? Yes. Okay. Which quirk are you checking off? Arm to the teeth and even those bite. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, uh, Dancer, how are you assisting? Uh, shall, shall. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm still at the scene, right? Uh, that yes. just means that I can provide some sort of tr distraction to the, the airborne guys by just being there and, and distracting them with these weird movements that I'm making because that looks and I just blew up this nearly blew up this whole facility that kind of should distract them a bit and that is too stress right um no just one just uh, one to, to assist is just one yeah nice cool actually just one for now uh actually the amount of stress depends on how strong your connection is to oh. the player so right now you okay. only have a connection of one yeah. If you increase okay. that connection, you're going to have to spend two to assist them. Okay. You, you can give okay. them more stuff. Okay, cool. I'll yeah. just... Yeah. So just one stress. So you, you're up to four die now, Shellshock. You don't need a collateral. <laughs> if you want. Yeah, I want to roll five. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I think... Okay. Here's the collateral die, and feel free to to um, um, uh, reject it if you want. I'm gonna create another clock, a six-step clock called Mandate Reinforcements. I'm not taking anything in the clock. I'm just gonna create it if you take the die. All right, fine. I'll just roll four. <laughs> All right, come on, it's four dice. What could go wrong? Never ask that question. There's a success. See, you wrote a success. Okay, risky standard. Um, hold on, I need to check, I need to check one thing. This is always thing I forget with Forge of Dark, with, with clock specifically. Uh, standard effect. Um, effect, effect, effect. Ah, here we go. Um, uh, effect. All right. I think you are going to take out two of the mechs. Oh, I think you're going to take out the two flying mechs for sure. Um, what does that look like when you unload all hell? Well, they're already two. lit up and illuminated. And now I guess we're shining through some sort of holy angelic light from this bullshit religion that doesn't really exist. But there is one hard and true law in the world that I know. Everything explodes. <laughs> and so I, you see these missile racks come over Brick's shoulders, such as they are. I mean, the Brick is basically just a pineapple with armor around it and a bunch of guns strapped on. But these missile racks just kind of go over the shoulders. And then you see every missile in the rack unload against these airborne targets. So it's just this stream of surface-to-air missiles screaming at them. And most of them connect. Enough of them connect to take out the two flying mechs and turn this farmland into the 4th of July. Not that anybody knows what that is anymore, because what even is a holiday? But it's bright. It looks like a military parade, only the kind of military parade that people don't come back from. And I reach down into the floor well of the mech and I pick up the half empty bottle of whiskey that I had stashed down there, unscrew the cap, take a slug, say, all right, who's next? <laughs> uh, I think that's a good, that's a good shot to end, but like, I have one last thing uh, to end this cliffhanger. I think you say who's next in like this voice kind of like, pipes through you don't know where it's piping through it's not piping through the loudspeaker it's almost like it's piping through the air and it's just hello is that my queen i spy oh that bitch <laughs> I get, uh, one last move or just one last word um let's see we have four minutes off from one last word uh yeah. and tell me what the move is and then uh, it would just be bombarding but i think we just see the tail start to 
spinning the uh, like laser uh, pistol, changing out for just like one gigantic missile, and uh, uh, the queen's just uh, starts uh, <coughs> writing in, uh, just typing in on the keyboard, and the uh, banners, the free load of banners for the uh, monarchy pop up on the uh, scorpion. And so, welcome to my coronation, bitch. <laughs> and I think we get we get a close up of your face, and that's when it turns that that you know the thing that happens to anime when it cut when it the episode's over and just turns more painterly, and da, 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 and we get the we go to the ending credits. Sad is that fly me to the moon. Um, we we're done with Ava. Um, it's it's probably like a it's probably like a nice jazzy uh sort of song as we we get shots of y'all playing hang around the opera and yeah we'll see if your bombardment works out next week um hell yeah oh sorry so that is some fucking mech action jesus i got i was like i was sorry to like no we don't have time to do the mission we're like no let's do this you're oh, okay i've got my, my buds boiling but i'm gonna end this broadcast you are great as always uh we're gonna we're gonna see how these these rambunctious misfits uh what, what time next week let's see how this mission goes it's going really well i'll say it's going really really well um but yeah i'm gonna end this broadcast thank you all very much uh we'll, we'll do a very quick debrief after this but then we'll stop the live stream thanks all very much for anyone who's watching goodbye youtube uh prepare